Oh, praise you the most. Shalom, Israel, most high. Christ bless you all. Okay. Happy Sabbath to you all. Oh, praise you the most high. We'll be back on another edition. Okay. We're going to be going over class this day, as always. I hope you brothers and sisters enjoyed last week's class. Okay. We did part two of House of the Dragon. Okay. So today we're going to be dealing with things that are happening in the backyard. You understand? We're going to be dealing with things that are happening in the house. You understand? Back in Israel. Yes, we're dealing with the white man, which is what we must teach. But we must deal with the things that are concerning Israel within. You understand? Both men and women, we must repent. We must keep God's commandments. You understand? We must repent. Okay, take notes, take notes. Okay. So give me Sarah 25 and 1. I'll give you the topic in a minute. All right. Sarah 25 and 1. Let's start there. Sarah 25 and verse 1. One thing we need to understand, Israel, is the most that God is gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. Wherever we are scattered, whether we are in the diaspora, which is where we are now, in South Africa particularly, oh, praise to the most high God for waking us up. In, on this side of the earth, oh, praise to the Lord. Okay. Uh, shalom to our brothers and sisters all over the world, scattered. Okay. China, India, Persia, Iran. You understand? Germany, Central America, Puerto Rico. Okay. Oh, praise to the most high. Oh, please. Sarah 25 and 1. Read that for me. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Go ahead. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. So the Lord says in three things he was beautified, meaning he was glorified. Go ahead. The unity of brethren. You see, the Lord says he's glorified when brothers and sisters come together. Yes. You understand? Yes. Read again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. Really? In three things I was beautified. The Lord says in three things he was glorified. Come on. And stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Read. Really? The unity of brethren. You see that thing? The unity of brethren. That's one thing that we have not learned. We have not seen it. But in these last days, the Lord says he's going to show us what unity actually looks like. Because we have never seen it with our own eyes. Give me that in um, Ephesians 4, verse 3. Watch this. The unity of brethren, the Lord says, is glorified in the unity of the brethren. When we come together in the same mind, the same judgment, the Lord says he is glorified. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's the word that is foreign to us in this captivity because we've been divided, we've been colonized. Our land and our culture and our identity and our heritage taken from us. So now we don't understand the word unity. We think we can unite under politics. We cannot. We think we can unite under democracy. We cannot. We think we can unite under Christianity. We cannot unite under Christianity. You understand? Read again. Verse 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We must endeavor. We must fight. To keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Go ahead. There is one body. There is one body. The body of Christ. Which is represented by what? By the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And one spirit. One spirit of Christ. Read. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. We are called in one hope of our calling. Because the hope we we have is that we Israel. We keep God's commandments. The Lord returns. He will deliver us from captivity. That is our hope. That is our faith. Read. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One understanding. Come on. One God. One God. The most high God of heaven and earth. Read. And Father of all. And Father of all the 12 tribes of Israel. Hold that. Give me Joel 2. Joel chapter 2. Okay. When it says, I'm God of Israel and none else. Read that for me. I'm the God of Israel and none else. 227. Come on. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Read. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Come on. And that I am the Lord your God. That I am the Lord your God. He's the Lord our God. The God of the Israelites. Read. And none else. And none else. God, the Most High God says, He's not a God of all nations. That's why the nations have come up with their own idols to worship. Because the Most High God is not the God of all nations on earth. Read. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. He says, God says we must never be ashamed that he is the God of Israel and none else. Read. And it shall come to pass afterward uh -huh. that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The all flesh is the 12 tribes of Israel in verse 27. Go ahead. 
and your sons and your daughters. Your sons and your daughters, men and women in this truth. Go ahead. Shall prophesy. We're going to prophesy the men. We're going to go to the street corners and prophesy and teach God's laws. Read. Your old men shall dream dreams. Read. Your young men shall see visions. Uh -huh. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. Go back to where he was at now. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, Ephesians 4. Go back to where we were. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6. Read. One God. One God. And Father of all. Uh, Father of all the 12 tribes of Israel. I am the God of Israel and none else, he says. Go ahead. Who is above all and through all and in you all. And in us all, the 12 tribes of Israel. The most High God is not in all the nations. He's in all the 12 tribes of Israel, the sons and daughters of Jacob. He only delight in us. Understand that. The most High God of heaven and earth, he delights in his children. That's why we must delight in the Lord. Understand, we must delight in the Lord of heaven and earth. Because he delight in us. Give me that in Isaiah. Okay. Give me Isaiah chapter 31. I think that's what I want. The Lord delights in us. Understand that. The, Lord, the most High God does not delight in all nations on earth. All right. Hold on a second. I know it's in Isaiah. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep. Isaiah 62 verse 4. Watch this. Read that for me. The Lord delights in us. So I'm going here to explain that the Lord delight in us. Read that. Come on, Isaiah 62 verse 4. Come on, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 4. Read. Thou shalt no more be turned forsaken. We are no longer going to be turned forsaken because right now, the nation thinks the Lord has forsaken us. The most high God has not forsaken us. You understand? The most high God has sent us into captivity for what? To learn our lesson and repent in these lands. Read. Neither shall thy land any more be turned desolate. You see that? Our land will no more be turned desolate because right now, our land is desolate without sons and daughters. There's bastards in our land right now. Amalek, Jewish people they called. Read. But thou shalt be called Hevisabah. No, thou shalt be called Hevzibah. And thou shalt be called Hevzibah. Thou shalt be called Hevzibah. Hevzibah means my delight is in her. The hair is Jerusalem. The hair is the twelve tribes of Israel. Read that part again. But thou shalt what? But thou shalt be called Hefzibah. We shall be called Hefzibah. Meaning my delight is in her. Go ahead. And thy land Beulah. And Beulah. Thy, and thy land Beulah. Beulah means married. Go ahead. For the Lord delighted in thee. The Lord delight in us. That what it means Hefzibah. Go ahead. And thy land shall be married. And our land shall be married. You understand? Because Christ is our husband with the bride. He's the bridegroom. Okay, is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back. Go back to Ephesians again. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. One God. One God. And Father of all. And Father of all the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Who is above all. And through all and in you all. And in us all. All the twelve tribes of Israel. The most high God is in all the twelve tribes of Israel. He delights in us. Read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You see that thing? Unto every one of us the Lord has given us a measure of grace. You don't know when your grace is, is going to expire. That's why you must what? You must take advantage of your grace period. Don't mess it up. Don't use grace as an occasion to sin. Read that in Galatians, okay? Galatians chapter 5. Because the Apostle Paul explained this thing. Galatians 5 verse 13. Watch this. We must not abuse our grace. We must take advantage of our grace period to use it effectively in these last days. Come on. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Watch this. For brethren, mm -hmm. ye have been called unto liberty. We have been called unto liberty. The liberty that we, we have in Christ. Read that in Galatians 5 and 1. Jump up to verse 1. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty uh -huh. wherewith Christ has made us free. Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. Read. And be not entangled again uh -huh. with the yoke of bondage. That yoke of bondage is making reference to the law of animal sacrifice. That is the yoke of bondage being referenced here. Go ahead. Behold. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, jump down to verse 13. One more again. Come on. 
the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 18. Read. For brethren, mm -hmm. ye have been called unto liberty. We've been called unto liberty. Come on. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. He says, don't use liberty for the occasion of the flesh. Meaning, don't use grace that has been given unto you, which is a gift to sin. Grace is not licensed for us to break God's commandments. Understand that thing. Read again, verse 18. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 18. Read. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Read. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. You see that thing? We must not use the grace period that the Lord has given unto us to sin. Grace is not licensed for us to break God's commandments. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right there. You understand? Go back to Sirach 25 and 1. Watch this. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified. Read. And stood up beautiful, both before God and man. Uh -huh. The unity of brethren. The unity of the brethren. Come on. The love of neighbor. The what? The love of nature. That's one thing we have not learned as a people. That's one thing we have not learned as a nation. That's why when you look at South Africa, we've got xenophobia here. Why do we have xenophobia? Because we have not learned how to love one another. We have not learned that we are the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why you've got xenophobia. You understand? So-called South Africans are taking our brothers and sisters from the Congo, from Ghana, from Nigeria, so on and so forth, which is evil as hell. You understand? You've got uh, organizations called Operation Tudula. Operation Tudula is of Satan. Let me say that again. Operation Tudula is of Satan, is of the devil. Understand that thing. Because Operation Tudula, you can see there's a white man behind that. Why? Because we have not learned who we are. We don't know we are the 12 tribes of Islam. Now your brother is your enemy now. You forgot who the enemy is. You've forgotten the fight, black man. That's why you're fighting your own brother. You understand? Read again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified. Go ahead. And stood up beautiful both before God and man. Come on. The unity of brethren. The unity of the brethren. Come on. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. The reason why there's no love among you, we don't have love one among each other, is because we've forgotten God's commandments. We've rejected the laws of God. We're not keeping God's laws as a nation. So therefore, our enemies, the ones that have enslaved us, they colonized us, they gave us new names, they sold us on slave ships, you understand? They were, they were oppressing us during apartheid, they still are. We're still paying colonial tax unto them. Those are the real enemies of our people. But our people have forgotten who the enemy is. You think an enemy is your brother from Nigeria. You think an enemy is your brother from the Congo. You think your enemy is your brother from Ghana, Guinea, Mali. You understand? You think your, you think your enemy is your brother from Namibia. You think your enemy is your brother from Mexico. You understand? The Americas. You understand? South America. You're wrong, black man. You don't just don't know who you are. You don't know how destroyed you are. But today, we're going to open your eyes so you can understand who you are and how to love your brother. Because how you, when you love your brother, you apply the royal law. The law says he's glorified in that thing. Give me that in James 2 verse 8. Read that. James 2 verse 8. We're coming back here. James chapter 2 verse 8. Watch this. The book of James chapter 2 verse 8. Pray. If ye fulfill the royal law. If you fulfill the royal law. The reason why we don't fulfill the royal law one among each other is because we don't see each other as royalty. That's the reason why. You don't see your brother as royalty. You don't see your brother or sister as the sons and daughters of God. You don't see them like that because why? Why Jesus has destroyed the black man and the black woman in the Christian church? Why Jesus has destroyed the mind of the black man and the black woman in politics? Because guess what? There's different political parties. They've got different views. You've got the DA, you've got the EFF, you've got the ANC. They don't get along. But on Sunday, they get along. They worship the same white man who they, they, they say they don't agree with. They, who they say oppress them during apartheid. But on Sunday, they go to church and worship that same white man that oppressed them during apartheid. You cannot make this up. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law. If you fulfill the royal law. Read. According to the scripture. According to the what? According to the scripture. When it says according to the scriptures, it means according to as it is written. That's what it means according to the scriptures. Leviticus 19, verse 17. This is what it means according to the scripture. You fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. That's the scripture that has been referenced. Thou shalt not what? 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Don't have hatred towards your brother. You must love your brother as you love yourself. But right now, there's hatred amongst Israel. That's why you hate your brother because you hate yourself. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. That's why we're rebuking the movement operation to do because it is of the devil. So we're going to correct you. Read. And not suffer sin upon you. We're not going to allow you to be in the midst of sin. What is the sin? Hating your brother in your heart. That's the sin. Read. Thou shalt not avenge. Thou shalt not avenge. Come on. Nor bear any grudge. Nor bear any grudge. Read. Against the children of thy people. Against the what? Against the children of thy people. Your neighbor is the children of your people. That's who your neighbor is. The children of your people. That's your neighbor. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I'm the one that's telling you to do it. I'm telling you to do that thing, to love your brother as you love yourself. Not hate your brother because you hate yourself. And where is the safe hatred come from? Because of white Jesus. The self hatred comes from because you rejected God's commandments. That's why now you hate yourself. And not only that, you hate your brother. You understand? But you love your enemy now, though. That's some evil stuff. It's time to return back to this book. You understand? Because I've been hearing so-called South Africans talking about a Zimbabwean. He says, no, that's a foreigner. You dumb as hell. You the devil the Bible speaks of. You're an idiot. Your brother from Zimbabwe was colonized for, by the same people that colonized you in South Africa. Your brother from Nigeria was colonized by the same people that colonized you here in South Africa. Your brother from Namibia, your brother from Ghana, they were colonized, they were, they were colonized by the same people that colonized you here in South Africa. So now you forgot who the enemy is. Now you rise about against your brother who look like you, but you don't take the fight to the white man. You don't take the fight to the Arab man. And we don't use guns. We don't use knives. We use the word of God to do it. Hold that. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Because, no, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Because you might think, you know, when I say take the fight to the nations, I'm not talking about guns and all that. I'm talking about delivering your people from the nations that are enslaving them. That's what I mean when it says, go take the fight to the enemy. That's how we take the fight to the enemy. We don't do no harm to the nations, but we deliver our people from the clutches of these nations that are oppressing them with the word of God. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Watch this. 2nd book of Corinthians chapter Chapter 10, verse 4. Read. For the weapons of our warfare. For the weapons of our warfare. Because, brothers, we are at war. I need you men to understand that we are at war. The nations are against us. Not only that, but our own people are against us. We must use the word of God to change their thinking. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't use guns. We don't use knives. We don't use politics. We don't use democracy. We don't use religion. We don't use economics. We use the word of God. Read. But mighty through God. But our weapons, the weapon of our warfare is mighty through God. What is the weapon of our warfare? Hold that. Give me that in Hebrews 4 verse 12. I'm going to show you the weapon we use. You understand? Because this is not a physical fight. It's a spiritual warfare. Understand that. And the weapon of choice is the word of God. Watch this. Read it. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. For the word of God is quick and powerful. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Come on. And sharper than any two-edged sword. And sharper than any two-edged sword. That's the weapon we use. The weapon we use is the word of God that is sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see that the word of God is a hammer. The word of God is fire. You understand? There's no weapon that is more powerful than this Bible right here. The Bible is capable of changing your mind, the way you think, the way you look at yourself, the way you look at your brother. You understand? The Bible is capable of changing your mind to see how you deal with your wife, how you deal with your husband, how you deal with your children, how you treat your brother. Understand that the word of God is capable of doing that thing, which is what we need in our nation because we're lacking that. Read. And of the joints, and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the, how powerful the word of God is. The word of God is that powerful. Understand that. So go back to Second Corinthians, chapter Second Corinthians, chapter ten, verse four. Read that again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter ten, verse four. Read. 
But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. This is a spiritual war. Read. But mighty through God. Our weapons are mighty through God. They are not might, they're not with our might. Hold that Zechariah 4 and 6. The weapons of the the weapons that we use it not is not because of our might. They are mighty through God. What is that weapon? The word of God. The word of God is the weapon we use. Okay? For now. Watch this. Read it. Zechariah 4 and 6. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Go ahead. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, Read. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Remember, Zerubbabel was part of the elite in Persia. Zerubbabel was a warrior. Zerubbabel was the king's bodyguard. That means he knew how to fight. You understand? He knew how to he, he knew how to he knew how to beat. He knew how to give the beats. He knew how to do that. You understand? But the Lord is saying, mm -mm, this fight right here, you're not gonna use guns. You're not gonna use you're not gonna use your fists. You're not gonna use your flying kicks. No, no, no. You're gonna use the word of God. Read again verse 6. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Because there's a book here, they were called the immortals. Look that book up. There's a book here, okay? There's a book that we found on the streets. No, 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 not these new ones. In the old ones, there's a book, okay? He's showing a picture of, um, he talks about the immortals. It's a small book, okay? Not that one. There's another one. It's a very tiny book. That one, that one right there on your right, on your right hand. That's it right there. That's it right there. Give me the book. This is the book right here that we're talking about. Um... Let me see. Yep. This is the name of the book, Ancient Battles for War Gamers. This right here. Not sure if the audience can see it, but that's the book right there. That's the book. Okay, this is the cover of the book. Okay. Ancient Battles for War Gamers. Now, in this book, um, it talks about the immortals on page 46. Okay. Hold on a second. I didn't want to go there, but... Yeah, I know Zerubbabel was one of the immortals during the time of the Persians, okay? Watch this. Hold on, let me see, let me see. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, uh, let me just read that. You see, the immortals. Uh, this is page 46. You see that thing right there, right there. The immortals, page 46, Okay. It says, of these, we of these we read, we read first in the pages of Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian, who gives us a vivid picture of the master of Sadis in 480 BC of the army of Xerxes, king of Persia. This is a this is a preparation for his projected invasion of Greece to avenge the defeat suffered by his predecessor, Darius at Marathon. So Zerubbabel was part of the elite in Persia. You understand? Zerubbabel was a warrior, okay? Our forefather during the time of the Persians. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. That is it on that. Now, read that again. Zechariah 4 and 6. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, Go ahead. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Come on. Say, not by might. Not by might. Not by your might. Not you by your physical might. You're going to win this. Read. Not by power. Not by your physical power you're going to win this war. Read. But by my spirit. But by the spirit of the Lord you're going to win this. And that's the war that we're in. This is a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. We must prepare our minds. Read. Save the Lord of hosts. Save the Lord of hosts. Go back to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal, not by our own might, not by our own power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, we're going to win this war. Go ahead. But mighty through God. But there's their warfare, their might, their weapons are mighty through God. Go ahead. To the pulling down of strongholds. To pull the strongholds that is in the minds and hearts of our people. The stronghold in the minds of our people right now is what? Why Jesus? That's a stronghold in the minds of our people because our people in the Christian church, they believe that the white man died on the cross for them. That's why when we teach that Jesus is black in the Bible, they say color doesn't matter. You know why? 
Because why Jesus is on their brain? Why Jesus is a stronghold in the minds of our people? That's why people blow their hair, they bleach their skin, they put on weaves. They, all men of evil, they do to themselves because why? They don't know who they are. They don't know how great they are. They don't know who their God is. They think their God is the white man. They think their God is Caesar Borgia. There is no white man that can die for you and me. Understand that. Read. Casting down imagination. So this truth, this Bible right here, the war that we're in is to cast down the imaginations of our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, in the world, in politics and so forth. Why? Because they don't know who they are. They think the white man is, is their God. They cannot imagine a world without the white man ruling over them. They cannot imagine the kingdom of the Most High God without the white man in it. You understand? That's why they always ask. When we teach that the Bible is the book of the Israelites, the, the Israelites are black people, they say, what about the white man? Because they cannot imagine a world without the white man in it. And that's the stronghold in the minds of our people. And the Bible is going to shut that down. Read that part again. It says what? Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Go ahead. And every high thing. And every high thing. Because Christianity is a high thing in the minds of our people. Why Jesus is a high thing in the minds of our people? That the, 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 the doctrine that is being pushed into the Christian church is that God loves everybody. That's a high thing in the minds of our people because, but it's not biblical. Read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Because Christianity has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Why Jesus has exalted itself against the knowledge of God? Christianity has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You understand? Democracy has exalted itself in the minds of our people against the knowledge of God. Our job is to use the word of God to shut it all down. We are that, that right now, we are at war for the, minds of our, for the minds and hearts of our people that are scattered all over the world through colonization, slavery, and forced migration. Understand that thing. Go back to Sarah 25 and 1. Okay? Ecclesiastes 25 and 1. Understand that, brothers and sisters, we are at war. And the war that we're in is a spiritual warfare because the nations have destroyed our minds. They have spoiled us. Hold on. Give me that in Colossians 2 verse 8. I'm going to get into the topic now. Just give me a second. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Okay? Colossians 2 verse 9. Colossians 2 verse 8. Okay? Colossians 2 verse 8. Watch what the Apostle Paul says here in the Spirit of Christ. Watch this. Read. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Come on. Beware. Lest any man spoil you. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Any man. Who's the any man? The white man during the time of the apostles. Rome. Who was spoiling our people during the time of the apostles? Rome was spoiling our people during that time. Go ahead. Through philosophy. Through what? Through philosophy. The philosophy that Rome was pushing back then was what? That everybody can be saved. That was they was pushing through the scribes and Pharisees. That was the one that was troubling our people during those days. Go ahead. And vain deceit. And vain deceit. Today, Christianity and white Jesus, that's the spoiling of our people. They are spoiling the minds and hearts of our people through philosophy and vain deceit. Christianity is a vain deceit. You understand? White Jesus is a vain deceit. Go ahead. After the tradition of men. After the because why Jesus teaches our people to follow the traditions of men. Christia, Christmas is a man-made tradition. Valentine's Day is a man-made tradition. You understand? New Year's Day, man-made tradition. Mother's Day, man-made tradition. Father's Day, man-made tradition. You understand? Okay, go ahead. Easter, man-made tradition. Birthdays, man-made traditions. Read. After the rudiments of the world. After the workings of the world. Whatever the world says do, guess what? They, that's what they push in Christianity. That's why they, they command the black man to bow the knee to the black woman and hand the black woman a flower on Valentine's Day. In the church. Because that's what Jesus, that's what white Jesus teaches. Read. And not after Christ. Because they don't teach after Christ. Christianity don't teach nothing after Christ. It's all of Satan. It's all of the devil. Understand that thing. Go back to Sarah 25 and 1. Okay, we have been spoiled as a people in these lands of our captivity. Wherever we are scattered, the nations have spoiled us. They spoiled us through their vain philosophies. You understand? And we think that's that's what the Lord wants. You understand? That we think that's what the Lord wants. That's why you, you hear our people say, I don't want my girlfriend to break up with me because it's Valentine's Day, it's of the Lord. I'm gonna show my love. No, that's lust. That's evil, that's demonic. Okay, read. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Go ahead. In three things I was beautified. Read. And stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren. That's what you are seeing here. The unity of the brethren. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. That's what you are seeing here. Love your neighbor as yourself. Come on. A man and a wife that agree together. A what? A wife, a man, and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that thing right there? A man and a wife that agree together because why? Because our nation began with marriage. Our nation began with marriage in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. They was married. Understand that? Our nation began with marriage. So in order for the marriage to take place, there must be the unity of the brethren. There must be the love of neighbors. When we are, once we accomplish the love of neighbors, a man and a wife can agree together. Why? Because we both believe the same things, which is God's laws. Amos 3 verse 3. Okay? A man and a wife that agree together. When the first agreement we must have is the laws of God. That's the first agreement. Anything else outside of that is going to cause confusion in the house, which is why you see today... Black families are broken up because why? Men and women don't agree together. Because the black man has not taken his rightful place as the head of the house. The black woman has not taken the, her rightful place to submit herself to her husband in everything. She has not done all that. The black man has not done all that. The black woman has not done all that. Nobody wants to submit themselves to the role that God gave them. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Can two walk together, uh -huh. except they be agreed? Can a man and a wife agree together, except they be in agreement with the laws of God? Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Because the first agreement is the God's commandments. This is our safety net. You, don't, you didn't know your wife if it wasn't for this book. She didn't know you if it wasn't for this book, if you met in the congregation. If you met in the world before you hear this truth, you come into the world, into the truth, you learn the Bible together, you learn how to what? To nurture your marriage according to the laws of God. And everybody submit themselves to the role that God has given them. Read what you got. Come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Now I beseech you, brethren. He says, I am begging you, brethren. Come on. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. That ye all speak the same thing. That ye what? That he all speak the same thing. A man and a wife that agree together, they must all speak the same thing. What does that mean? The two shall be one flesh. That's what he's talking about. Or they must be, have the same mind. Read. And that there be no divisions among you. There be no divisions among you. Because that's why it says, can two walk together except they be agreed. If we are not in agreement, we cannot walk together. Neither can we have the same mind. Neither can we be one flesh. Read. But that he be perfectly joined together. We must be perfectly joined together. The only thing that is going to perfectly join us together, hold that Psalms 19 verse 7. There's only one thing that is going to perfectly join the man and the wife together. That's God's commandments. There's only one perfect thing in this world, God's laws. Read what you got. Psalms 19 verse 7. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. I'm now getting into the topic now. Pay attention. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God, they are perfect. God's commandments, they are perfect. There's nothing God, there's nothing wrong with God's laws. God's law says a man is the head of the house. A man is the head of the house. That's a perfect law. The Bible says there's no 50-50 in the house. That is a perfect law. The Bible says a woman must submit herself to her husband and reverence him. That is a perfect law because it sets order in the house. And the children will not be defiled by the disorder of the man and the woman not knowing what to do with themselves. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God, they are perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. The laws of God, they are going to change the man's thinking. They're going to change the woman's thinking. Both of them will be one flesh. Go ahead. The testimony of the Lord is short. The testimony of the Lord is God's commandments and his testimonies in this book. Go ahead. Making wise the simple. You see that thing? Making wise the simple. Because the husband will be wise and the wife will be wise. And both of, we, both of them will be one flesh. Guess what? They will be a good example to the Israelites, to, the to their brothers and sisters who are not yet married. You understand? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Go back to now. Go back to uh, Sarah 25. And one again. Because one thing you need to understand, man and wife must agree together. The first agreement is the laws of God. That's the only agreement, by the way. God's commandments. If you cannot agree with God's laws, we cannot be one mind, one spirit, one judgment. Go ahead. 
The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Come on. The unity of brethren. The unity of brethren. Come on. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Come on. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that? A man and a wife that agree together. The reason why they agree together and there's no divisions among them is because the man knows his role according to what God gave him. The woman knows her role according to what God has commanded. And both of them, they submit themselves to God's laws according to the role that they were commanded to fulfill. That's why they're going to be one. That's why both of them will be one flesh. Now give me that in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Both of them shall be one flesh. Okay, because that's what Christ said. Give me that in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Watch this. Start of verse 3. So these are the scribes and Pharisees tempting our Lord and Savior the Christ regarding marriage. Okay, watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. Go ahead. The Pharisees also came unto him, mm. tempting him. They were doing what? Tempting him. You see that thing? They were not coming sincerely. Read. And saying unto him, Read. Is it lawful for a man? To put away his wife for every cause. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning uh -huh. made them male and female? Made them what? Made them male and female. Made them male and female. You know, I saw some videos on TikTok that say, Now it's offensive to call a woman female. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this that, that gender fluid garbage, ne? That gender fluid nonsense. Yes, it is nonsense. You understand? Because the most I made is so simple. There's only two genders on this earth. Male and female. So those that are saying gender fluid. Today I'm a dog. Today, tomorrow I'm a, I'm a penguin. To, the other day, you know, I'm a, I'm a shark. Mm? All of a sudden, guess what? I'm a chihuahua and all. Listen to me. Let's, do not listen to none of that stuff. They do not accept what they are telling you because they cannot accept themselves. Why should we accept you when you cannot accept yourself how God made you? You simple as hell. We are not going to do that. We are going to lean on God's laws. But we are going to command you to repent though according to God's commandments. Read that verse 4 again. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Because recently there was a cause. What well, is this? International Women's Day. When was it? Yesterday? Day before? Yes, Thursday, right? So there was a video where we have Piers Morgan, Top TV. They were discussing something like that about that, about, um, you know, Women's Day and all that. And there was a woman that she was a feminist, okay, pushing um, LGBTQ and all that because LGBT is the fourth wave of feminism, in case you didn't know. Let me say that again. LGBT community, the alphabet community, guess what? That's the fourth wave of feminism because there was a white woman online talking to Piers Piers Morgan. That's his name, right? And she's a feminist. And she was in disagreement with this LGBT woman who was pushing that gender fluid. You understand? They were saying that they are hijacking the feminist movement. Of course they are. Because the feminist movement was hijacking what? Was hijacking the order in our community and the black women joined that nonsense. That's why now the black woman is disconnected and independent and separated from her black man while the white woman is connected to her white man and married to him. You see that? Black woman, it's time to come back to your man in the spirit of the Lord, the Christ. Understand that? Black man, it's time to return back to your woman in the spirit of the Lord. Mm, I'm touching something. I'm coming there. Today is going to be a beautiful day. Oh, praise to the Lord. Read verse 4 again. Come on, come on. Verse 4. Chapter 19, verse 4. Read. And he answered and said unto them, Go ahead. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning? We, he which made them at the beginning. This is how you shut that gender fluid down. With the one verse only. You see, the word of God is powerful. Just one verse and that whole gender fluid is all shut down. That's the strongholds in the minds of our people. Read that thing again. That he that what? That he which made them at the beginning. He which made them at the beginning. Go ahead. Made them male and female. Made them male and female. No, there was um, gender fluid. Made them male and female. No, it. Made them male and female. There was no such thing during those days. It's a new thing in the earth. Okay, read. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother. Shall a man leave father and mother. Go ahead. And shall cleave to his wife. That means this man has a job. He has a place to stay. 
That's why he leaves father and mother and join and cleave unto his what? And cleave to his wife. No, to his baby mama or his girlfriend or Makwapen or side chick. And shall cleave to his wife. Shall cleave to his wife. Go ahead. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they too shall be one flesh. They shall be in the same mind and in the same judgment. Go ahead. Wherefore, they are no more twain. They are no more separate. Go ahead. But one flesh. But one flesh. Same mind, same spirit, same judgment. Okay, is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. What therefore God has joined together. What therefore God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. What God joined together is what? The two of you, you both believe in the Lord. You both understand the roles that God has given you. And you submit yourself wholeheartedly to those roles that God has given you. And when you do that, guess what? God has joined that together. The most that God has joined that together. Backdoor marriages, the Lord has not joined that together. Satan has joined that together. Understand that? Satan will be marinating both of you for the rest of your days. Understand that? Read that verse again. Verse 5. Come on, come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. Read. And he and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother. Shall a man leave father and mother. Go ahead. And shall cleave to his wife. And shall cleave to his wife. Read. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they too shall be one flesh. Okay. Go ahead. Come on. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. They are no more twain, but one flesh. Go ahead. What therefore God has joined together. Read. Let no man put asunder. Let no man put asunder. Amen to that thing. Amen to that. Okay. So now, we need to understand. Today, how is it? That men and women don't agree together. What's the problem? Give me James 4 and 1. A man and a wife that agree together. What is the problem? Why is it that men and women don't get along today? Black men and black women, Israelite men and Israelite women do not get along. What's the problem? James 4 verse 1. This is the problem right here. I'm going to show you what the problem is. Okay, read that. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Where do these wars and fightings come among you? By the way, remember now, a war is something you plan. You understand? A war is premeditated. You don't just go to war with, an, with another nation. You plan it. You plan how much ammunition you've got in your arsenal. You understand? And you also know how much how, how long is it going to take for you to destroy your enemy? It's, that's war. War is premeditated. Read that verse again, verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Where do wars and fightings come among you? Why is the black man and the black woman don't get along? Why they cannot get married? Why is 80% of the black women leaving their marriages say, I'm not happy? Mm -mm. Why, why are they saying that? 80% of our sisters leave their marriages. 80% of our sisters, they break their families apart. What's the problem? Feminism. Independent woman stuff. You understand? Read again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. From whence come wars and fightings among you? When comes wars and fightings among you? Why does black men and black women fight one with another? You understand? Why is 80% of these divorces, they are initiated by black women? Why is that? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why. The Apostle James is going to give us the answers here. Read. Come they not hence. Uh-huh. Even of your lusts. Even of your what? Even of your lusts. That's the problem. It says, even of your lusts. Go ahead. That war in your members. You see that thing? The reason why black men and black women don't get along. Families are being broken up by 80% of black women ending their marriages is because of their lusts that war in their members. What are those lusts? What is the last exactly? What is the last? Hmm, I wonder. Give me the book of Galatians, okay? I'm going to show you what the last is. This is the last right here. You understand? This is the last. Give me Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And verse, yeah, no, no, yeah, Galatians 5, read verse, read verse 17. Watch this. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. The flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit is the word of God. The flesh is your sin 
is fighting against the word of God. Read. And the spirit against the flesh. And the spirit, the word of God, fights against your flesh, meaning the sin that's in your flesh. Read. And these are contrary the one to the other. Brothers, this thing is lopsided. Can you fix this up? Okay, read that, read that part again. Read. The Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Come on. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. The flesh lusts against the spirit. Read. And the spirit against the flesh. And the spirit against the flesh. The spirit is the word of God. Hold that. Give me John 6 verse 63. Let's see what the spirit is. In case some of you don't understand what that is. John chapter 6 verse 63. You understand? Read that. The book of John chapter 6 verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the what? It is the spirit that quickens. Now this is Christ speaking here. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that changes you. That causes you to be born again. Read. The flesh profited nothing. The sin that's in you does not profit you, but it's only going to get you death. It's going to get you killed. It's going to get you separated from your husband. Read. The words that I speak unto you. The words that Christ spoke unto us, go ahead. They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. And they are life. That's the spirit. The spirit is life. The laws of God. God's commandments. Go back. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. One more again. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Read. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. Go ahead. And the spirit against the flesh. And the spirit against the flesh. The spirit is the word of God that fights off the flesh that's in you. The lust of your flesh. Read. And these are contrary the one to the other. Because the word of God is contrary to your sin. But your sin is contrary to the word of God because your flesh wants to fulfill it. Read. So that ye cannot do the things that he would. Which is keeping of God's laws. Jump down now to verse 19. Watch this. This is what's causing men and women to fight one with another. That's why the black woman does not get along with the black man. The black woman does not want to submit herself to the black man. You understand? Sisters, today is your day. Understand that? You understand? Black men, pay attention. Because, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You know how it goes. Read. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh are manifest. Read. Which are these? He's going to tell you what they are. Go ahead. Adultery. Adultery. You see, adultery is the reason why men and women don't get along. Marriages don't last because the wife still wants to play the whole. The husband still wants to play the whole manga. Now you've got a whole manga and a whole coming together saying, we want to get married. But they have not dealt with the lust of their flesh before they got married. Read. Fornication. Fornication, sexual sins, read. And cleanness. And cleanness. Some sisters want to have sex with their husband on their marriage. He says, no, you know, it's nicer when I'm on my periods. Mm. Go ahead. Some disgusting stuff. Can't make it up. Read. Lascivious. I'm going to show you that, by the way. I'm not making it up. I'm going to show it to you. Keep going. Idolatry. Idolatry. That's the part right there. You see that part right there? Idolatry. That's the reason why men and women don't agree together. Because what is the idolatry? The woman does not want to submit herself to the role that God gave her, which is to submit herself to her husband. What is the idolatry? She idolizes the position of her husband. She wants to be equal or above him. That's the idolatry that comes in. You understand? Worshipping of other gods. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. Go ahead. Worshipping of white Jesus. Because many of our sisters that go to the Christian church, worshipping white Jesus, they don't submit themselves to their husbands. They are not submissive to their husband, but they are submissive to Caesar Borges. They submit themselves to that white image of Jesus. When they are dealing with you sexually, that's who they see. Yes, that's who they see. You understand? I see black women cry and fall on the floor in the church, weeping for white Jesus. Hmm? So you think when they are dealing with you sexually as a husband, they listen, keep reading. Witchcraft. Witch, because that is witchcraft. Go ahead. Hatred. Hatred. Because you hate your husband. You understand? Yeah, that's the hatred. You hate your wife. Read. Variance. Variance. Get the definition of variance. Get the definition of variance. Put it on the screen. I want the people to see this thing. Variance. I want to see that thing. The definition of variance. Okay. This is what's causing men and women to fight. Because remember it says, Whence cometh wars and fightings among you? War is premeditated. 
War is not accidental. Mm -mm. War is premeditated. That means the wife has to premeditate how she wants to go to war with her husband. The wife has the wife, the husband has to premeditate how he goes to war with her wife with his wife. You see that thing? Uh -huh. That means what? They what? Is they call it railing for railing. You understand? You did this to me, I'm gonna do this to you. She did that to me, I'm gonna do that to you. You did this to me, then is this this tennis match going back and forth. Because why? The black man does not want to submit himself to the role that God gave him. The black woman does not want to submit herself to the role that God gave her. But tonight is women's night. Mm. I think that was International Women's Day not so long ago. All oh, praises, tribute to that day. I'm gonna show you how this works. Sisters, today is your day. I'm going to show you the reason why 80% of you, you break your families. Read that. Variance. What's the definition of variance? Is it she on the, um, is the, can the people see it on the screen? Yes, oh, please. Read it. Definition of variance. Go ahead. Now. Mm -hmm. Definition one. Go ahead. The effect or quality of being different. The effect of quality of being different. Read. Divergent. Divergent meaning what? You adverse to your husband. Read. Or inconsistent. You are inconsistent in the laws of God because you don't want to keep God's commandments. Read. Right? Because of your lusts that war in your members. Read. Right? Synonyms. Come on. Similar. Read. Right? Difference. Difference. Variation. Variation. Discrepant. That means you are not one with your husband. You are not with you are not one with your husband. You want to compete with your husband. Hence the war in the house. War is premeditated. That means you sit and plan and plot and scheme how you're going to fight with your husband because you're fighting to be top bunk. You want to be equal or above him. Read. Discrepancy. Uh -huh. Dissimilarity. Dissimilarity. You mean what? You want to be dissimilar to your husband. The Bible says the two shall be one flesh. Read. Disagreement. You disagreement. You disagree with your husband because of the role that God gave you. You want the you want the position of your husband. Read conflict. Conflict. Read divergent. Divergent. Come on. Deviation. Deviation from God's commandments. Read contrast. Uh huh. Distinction. That's it on that. Is that it on that? Now that's fine. Now go back to Galatians chapter five. Read verse verse nineteen one more again. No, no, verse twenty. Verse twenty. That's where we were. The book of Galatians chapter five verse twenty. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry, come on. Witchcraft. Uh. Hatred. Variance. Variance, meaning to be different. You don't want to follow the chain of command. You don't want to follow what does say the Lord. Because why? It's all feelings based. You understand? Feelings, you know, that's where Satan plays. Satan plays on the level of that's where Satan operates. Feelings. You understand? Read. Emulations. Stop right there. What? Emulation. Emulation. Remember, it says, when come as go back to James 4, because I know they forgot. James 4 verse 1. Why is 80% of our sisters breaking their families and leaving children to become what? To be fatherless. Read. The book of James chapter 4 verse 1. Because a lot of these women, they are bums. I'm going to tell you straight. A lot of, because yes, there's bums with them. You've got men that are bums, but today I'm, I'm talking about women that are bums. That's what I'm talking about this day. Good for nothing, bums, women that are bums, who would break their families because they don't like the way their husband is talking to them because she's, sh he's shouting at me. He's, listen, sometimes you do dumb stuff, you gonna, we're going we, we gonna to shout at you to get it together. It is what it is. You understand? Keep reading. No, no, the definition. We want the definition, right? Emulation. Get the definition of emulation. Stay with me, brothers. Yes, sir. Emulation. Okay. The definition of emulation. Because this is the reason why black women break their families. Okay. Read that. Israelite women. You understand? Black women, Hispanic women, Native American Indian women. Bantu women, so-called. Read. Definition of emulation. Do we have it on the screen? Yes, sir. Read. Effort to match. Or oh, stop right. Read that slow. Because we slow. We black. Read that, read that part again. What? Effort. What? Effort. You see, you know what that means when it says effort? Stop right there. Go back to James 4 verse 1. I'm going to show you something. It says effort. That means she's putting effort to match or surpass you. What is that called in the Bible? 
Let's see what the apostle, the apostle James calls it. Watch this. I'm going to show you what he calls it. Read it. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. From whence come wars. When, whoa, whoa, when come, whence come what? From whence come wars. Whence come wars. That's the effort. That's the effort right there. That's the effort. Whence come wars. Come on. And fighting. And fightings. Come on. Among you. Among you. Read. Come they not have. He's going to tell you where they come from. Read. Even of your lusts. Even of your lusts. Go ahead. That war in your members. That war in your members. So one of the lusts that war in the women's members, our sisters today, is emulation. That's one of the that, that's one of the the what the last that war in their members. Now read the definition of emulation. Now, that's one of the last that war in their members. Read it. Definition of emulation. Go ahead. Now, effort uh -huh. to match or surpass effort to match or surpass. Come on, a person. A person. The person here is your lord. You call you call your husband my lord, but you want to be equal or above him. You see, that's, that's, the, that's a contradiction. It doesn't make no sense. You can't say, my Lord, but you want what? You fight and you war, you go to war with your husband to match or surpass him in his role that God has given him. That's crazy. Ray. Effort to match or surpass a person or achievement. Or achievement. You see that? They call it boss chick. That's what they call themselves now. Boss chicks and boss bitches. Yes, it is what it is. It's the truth. We're going to call it like it is. Okay? Boss chicks and boss bees. That's what they call themselves. You understand? So, read it, read it again. Effort to match or surpass a person mm -hmm. or achievement typically by imitation. You see that typically by imitation. Now, get that in Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Effort to surpass or match a person or an achievement Typically by imitation, you want to be equal with them. You cannot be equal to your husband because that's not the role that God is giving you, black woman. Sisters, be in your role and you will thrive in that role. Because how can you be successful in a role that God did not give you? That's why you're frustrated. You understand? The reason why you're frustrated in the role because you frustrate is because you are you are trying to fulfill the role that God didn't give unto you. That's why you're not going to succeed. Hence the frustration. Hence now you've got deep hatred for men. And when you have sons, you're going to have deep hatred for your son. You understand? Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? How long are you going to keep this up, our sisters? Sisters, how long are you going to keep this up? Backsliding from your role that God gave you. God gave you a role. Why are you backsliding from it? Read. For the Lord had created a new thing in the earth. The Lord had created a new thing in the earth. Watch this. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. She will what? She'll have the spirit of emulation upon her. She'll have the spirit of a man upon her. She will want to match or surpass that man. You understand? So it's not going to work because you're backsliding from the role that God has given you. That's why you're not successful. That's why many of you now, you are single mothers, you are baby mamas. Why? You, the men, they sleep with you though, but they don't make you, you're not, you're not a wife material. You can, the men don't marry you. Why? Because you, you are backsliding from, you are backslid, backslid from the role that God has given you. That's why. That's the problem. So you have, don't have a hedge over you. Get that in Zrak. Okay. Zrak 36, is it? Zrak 36, uh, read verse 25. Because now you don't have a hedge. That's why you are backsliding from the role that God has given you. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Watch this. Where no hedge is. Where no hedge is. When there's no leader. When the, the woman has no hedge. She doesn't have to have a leader, which is a man over her. Go ahead. Dead, the possession is spoiled. That's why now our sisters, they are spoiled now. Their spirits are spoiled. Their minds are spoiled. Their bodies are spoiled. Because now all these men, they realize that because you don't listen to your father, you don't listen to your brother, you don't listen to your uncle, you don't listen to your grandfather. You understand? You listen to the black women, 
There are black women that are advising you on marriage and then themselves are not married. They don't know nothing about marriage, but they're going to advise you about that. You understand? So they are keeping you single when they're supposed to what? Teach you how to love your husband and how to love your children, how to keep your man. Because our older women, our older mothers, they used to do that. But today, grandmothers now, they are 26 years old. She's a grandmother. You can't make this up. We see them all the time here in the gussies. We see them all the time here in the locations, in the ghettos. We see them. A 30-year-old grandmother. 30-year-old. You cannot make it up. Okay? Um, go back. Jeremiah. Yeah, go back to Jeremiah's. Read that again, Jeremiah 31. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Pray. How long will thou go about, O thou, o thou backsliding daughter? O thou backsliding daughters of Zion. Go ahead. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Because you decided that to hell with the role that God gave you, now you this is what you want now. Go ahead. A woman shall compass a man. You want to be equal or above your man. You see that thing right there? So go back now. Go back to the definition of emulation. Go, go back right there. Definition of emulation. Read. Now, uh -huh. effort to match or surpass a person or achievement. You see that? Effort to match or surpass a person or achievement. Go ahead. Typically, by imitation. So that's why today you see black women says they are not happy in their marriages. Why did you leave, sister? Why did you leave your husband with three or four kids? No, it's because I wasn't happy. I was not being fulfilled. Because they think marriage is about love. Marriage is about duty. Marriage is about commitment. You understand? Marriage is about the role in the role that God has given you. You must fulfill the role that God has given you. It's got nothing to do with love. It's about commitment and duty. That's what marriage is. Because they think I'm making this up. Yes, I'm not making this up. Give me that in Tobit. Okay? Tobit chapter 8. You're not going to read anything about love over here. Love is the keeping of God's laws. That's what actually get that. Second John verse 6. Let's get the definition of love according to the most high God of heaven and earth. Okay? Read that. Second book of John, chapter verse 6. Read. And this is love. This is love. Come on. That we walk after his commandments. No, no, no. How I feel in my heart. That we walk after his his command. No, goosebumps and butterflies. That we walk after his command. That's what love is. The keeping of God's laws. Read. This is the commandment. No, no, this is a feeling. This is the commandment. No, 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 this is how I feel. This is the commandment. This is my imagination and my opinion. Go ahead. This is the commandment. This is the commandment. Come on. That as ye have heard from the beginning. As you have heard from the beginning, from the time of Genesis. Go ahead. You should walk in it. You see that? You should walk in it. You should meaning you should fulfill it. Now give me Tobit 8. Tobit chapter 8. Read verse 6. Watch this. The book of Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Listen to the marriage vows right here. Go ahead. Thou madest Adam. Thou madest Adam, that first black man that you hate so much. Go ahead. And gave him Eve, his wife. You see that? And gave him Eve, his wife. Read. For an helper and stay. For an helper, for a help meet for him. Go ahead. Of them came mankind. Of them came mankind. Because Adam and Eve was married. Read. Thou hast said. Uh -huh. It is not good. It is not what? It is not good. It is not good. Go ahead. That man should be alone. That man should be alone. Go ahead. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. An aid like unto himself. Go ahead. And now, O oh Lord, mm -hmm. I take not this my sister for last. You see that thing? I take not this my sister for last. This brother right here, Tobias, he did not take this our sister for last. You understand? Go ahead. And when you don't marry for last, it lasts. But if you marry for last, it doesn't last. You see how that works? Go ahead. But uprightly. But uprightly. Read according to the laws of God. Go ahead. Therefore, mm -hmm. mercifully ordain. Mercifully ordain, come on. That we may become aged together. Because when you don't marry for last, you'll become aged together. The reason why you see 80% of black women breaking up their families is because they married for last. They married for last. 
That's why the Most High God has not ordained that marriage to what? For them to age together. Because she breaks her family because of what? Her feelings. Her feelings that don't line up with the laws of God. You see, what we just read here, we didn't read anything about feelings and love here. We read, we read about duty, commitment, you understand? And the role in that duty that you've been commanded to fulfill. That's what we're reading here. Okay? That you may become aged together. Go ahead. And she said with him. And she what? And she said with him. Watch this. Amen. I agree. A man and a wife that agree together. That's what we're reading here. She said what? Read that verse again. Verse 9, verse 8. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 8. Go ahead. And she said with him. Uh -huh. Amen. You see that? A man and a wife that agree together. That's what we just read in Surah 25. We're reading it here in Tobit. You understand? Get the synonyms now of emulation. Oh, by the way, the topic for the class is called bold women. Bold women. Bold women. That's the topic for the class. Bold women. Bold women. That's the topic for tonight's class. The word bold is an acronym. You understand? You're going to get the definition of that acronym during the class. Okay, but the definition of tonight's class is called bold women. Now read the, the synonyms of emulation. Synonyms for emulation. Go ahead. Simulation. Uh -huh. Impersonation. Impersonation, read. AP. Impersonation. Click the definition of impersonation. I want you to read that. The definition of impersonation. What that mean? Did you find it, brothers? Impersonation. Okay. Now read that. Definition of impersonation. Go ahead. Now. Mm. An act of pretending. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop right there. A what now? An act. An act. An act. An act of what? Of pretending. So you see that thing? It's an act of pretending. That's what emulation is. So our sisters... That said, when they are boss chicks, it's an act. They are pretending. You understand? But guess what? Because, hold that. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to show you that that act has turned into reality now. And so they want now they want men, particularly black men, to match that fantasy that they have in their heads. They want black men to jump hoops to fulfill they act an impersonation that now has become reality in their minds, which is all fantasy and fairy worlds. Okay? Read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Read verse 10. Watch this. 2 book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10. Read. And with all deceivableness. With all deceivableness. Deceivableness goes into sin. Read. Of unrighteousness. And all deceivableness of sin unrighteousness meaning the deceit of sin what is the sin the act of impersonating the role of their husband because it's all fairy tale you see that's not real that's fantasy go ahead in them that perish in them that perish because they they are backsliding from their roles now the roles that god gave them now they they die alone with the dog that's what's happening now in them that perish now they die alone with the dog read because they received not the love of the truth. They don't love, they have not received the love of the truth. The truth about what? The roles that God gave them. Read. That they might be saved. That they might be saved when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And for this cause. And because of this, read. God shall send them strong delusion. God shall send them strong delusion. So black women saying she's a boss chick. She's an independent black woman. But she lives in a man's world. The world that she lives in is built and owned and controlled and financed by men. But she's an independent black woman. But she's still depending on a man. She's, she, what she's telling you when she says, I'm an independent black woman, she's telling you, I'm not dependent on you black man. I'm dependent on the white man, her husband. The white man sees a Borges. Because that's, a, that's who her real husband is. She might be married to you, but she's married to that white Jesus. 
That's her husband. So she's dependent on him wholeheartedly. How do I, how do I know this? Because I, I see black women in the church, they'll be crying. But they do overnight prayers. You see black women weeping for Tammuz. You see them weeping in the church for Tammuz. Ezekiel 8.14 because that's who the white, the white, that white image of Jesus is actually the pagan Messiah, Tammuz. That's what the pagan Messiah was called during the time of Babylon. And America is the daughter of Babylon. So they took Tammuz from ancient Babylon and they renamed Tammuz to Caesar Borgia. And they painted him white. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, verse 14. Watch this. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. That's the, the, today, that's the Christian church. Go ahead. Which was toward the north. Read. And behold, mm -hmm. there said women. They said black women doing what? Weeping for Tammuz. They were weeping, crying, giving their soul to that white Jesus today. The same thing they did back then, they are doing it today. And they want black men to match their superficial requirements. When they're supposed to match the black man's requirement. Now, women shall compass a man. Now they want black men to chase after them to meet their superficial requirements, which are not realistic. And who define those superficial requirements? Social media, by the way. It's not the aged women in their lives. It's not their grandmothers who are married to their grandfathers. No. It's overweight black women online who lizzo. That's them. They following them. You understand? Now go back. 2 Thessalonians 2. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Read that. 2 book of Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Read. And for this cause, uh -huh. God shall send them strong delusion. The most high God is going to send them strong delusion. What is the strong delusion? They think they can live without a man. I can do bad all by myself. I'm an independent black woman. I don't need no man. But she needs a man every day who builds the infrastructure that she uses every day. She, 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 but she does need a man who builds the car that she drives. She does need a man who builds the house that she lives in. She does need a man who's, who set up the plumbing system that is in her house. She does need a man. The, the only thing is that she's not telling you the man that she needs in her life. The white man. You understand? That's her husband. Okay? We speak in facts. Understand that. Okay. Now, go back. Keep, finish that verse. Finish that verse. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. And for this cause, uh -huh. God shall send them strong delusions. God shall send them strong delusions. Go ahead. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. What is the lie? I can do, I, I don't need no man. I can, I can do it without a man. That's a lie. Because a woman was created for a man. Hold that. Go back to, go to Genesis. Because I know some of you right now, you're twitching like robots. Hmm? Right now, you, you're supposed to be listening to class and taking notes to change your mind. You're watching iRobot. You're twitching like one. Read the Bible. Genesis chapter 3. Watch this. Is it Genesis 3? Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2. Read verse 21. Watch this. The purpose of a woman on this earth. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. The black man, go ahead. And he slept. Uh -huh. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. Made he a woman, go ahead. And brought her unto the man. No, she was independent. And brought her unto the man. I don't need no man. And brought her unto the man. I can do better all by myself. And brought her unto the man. You see that thing? I'm an independent black woman. And what? And brought her unto the man. The woman was created for a man. Period. We're reading it here in the Bible. Go ahead. And Adam said, mm -hmm. This is now bones of my bones. Because she literally came out of Adam. Read. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone. Read. And flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Go ahead. Because she was taken out of man. That's what the word, that's what the name woman means, meaning out of man. So when you hear our sisters, because they are the only ones, by the way, our sisters, they are the only ones that say, I don't need no man. They are the only race of women that say all that. 
That's why they are the only race of women are independent, alone, with dogs and children, without a man. That's what we're reading here. You understand? So, imperson impersonation. Read that definition again. Impersonation. Read it. Definition of impersonation. Read. Now, mm -hmm. an act of pretending. An act of pretending. Go ahead. To be another person. To be another person. Who's another person in this instance? Her husband. Read. For the purpose of entertainment. For whoa, whoa, whoa. For the what? For the purpose of entertainment. This is the reason why you see women, our sisters today, they don't take marriage seriously. Because marriage to them is entertainment. They don't want a marriage. They want a wedding though. They love a wedding. That's why, it's, that's why you even have a show on, is it Mzanzi Magic and all that? What's the name of the show? My Perfect Wedding. You see that? They, my perfect wedding. My perfect wedding, let me tell you, my perfect wedding is of the devil. Let me say it again in case I started. My perfect wedding is of Satan. Because many of those marriages, guess what? They, guess, guess what? The women, their whole life is surrounding the, 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 the celebration of the wedding, not the marriage. Because they want the beautiful white wedding dress and all that. But after they get married, after the day of the marriage and all that, what do they do? They go back into the wedding pants. They don't submit themselves to that man. They don't reverence that man. They talk back to that man. They interrupt him when he speaks. They are screaming at him. They lie to him. They, they belittle that man. But yesterday, she was in that beautiful wedding dress. The very next day, she's wearing pants, acting like a man. So my perfect wedding again, it is of Satan. Yeah, I know some of you, your feelings are hurt. I don't give a damn. My perfect wedding is of the devil. Make my perfect marriage. How about that? How about my perfect marriage? Because then it will make you, it will put some sense in you. Why are you getting married in the first place? Because you don't know, many of you don't know why you're getting married. When you're, you're, you, you're getting married is about your wedding, which is about your ego. You want to other women to see you getting married. But guess what? You are not a, you are not a wife. You are playing wife. But you are not one. Because you are pretending. Marriage is an entertainment for you. That's why 80% of you leave your marriages. 80% of you break your families. Four out of five of you will not get married. You understand? 80% of you, you break your families because marriage to you is entertainment. Marriage is not honorable to you, but wedding is is. Give me that in Hebrews 13 verse 4. I'm going to show you the mindset of these feminist modern women. These feminist modern women, marriage is not honorable to them, but the wedding is. The wedding is honorable to this. The, the modern women, wedding is honorable, not marriage. That's why they're not wives. Is she's just a girl who played wedding? That's it. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. But to modern women, wedding is honorable. Let me say that again. To modern women, these feminist women, boss chicks, and all that, wedding is honorable to them. Not marriage, wedding. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. Read. And the bed undefiled. But the bed undefiled. Go ahead. But whoremongers. Whoremongers. And adulterers. And adulterers. God will judge. God will judge. Because you marry for what? For lust. You marry for your ego. Not because you want to actually be a wife. You want traditional privileges, but you are a modern woman. You understand that? You want a wedding, but you don't want a marriage. That's why when you don't when you don't wear that um, wear that white dress, you say I'm not married. But the husband took out lovola for your family. To to he, he forked out lovola. You understand? That's why because marriage is not honorable to modern women. Wedding is honorable to modern women. Marriage is honorable to traditional women. Marriage is honorable to traditional women because traditional women, they are about submissive to their husband. They reverence their husband. 
You understand? They are feminine, okay? And they are silent, okay? They are supportive and cooperative. Those are traditional women. They will get married. Because it's not about the wedding, it's about marriage. To them, marriage is honorable. But to modern women, which is 80% of our sisters that break their families, those are not wives. Those are girls playing wedding. That's it. Because it's only on the wedding day where they have to be the center of attention. Your husband is the center of attention because he's the one that made the decision to marry you. Not the other way around. You take him on his name, not the other way around. But you make it about your day. No, no, no. It's his day. Because he's the one that made a decision to marry you. You taking on his name. Give me that in Tobit. Okay? Give me that in Tobit. Tobit chapter 6. No, no, Tobit 3. Tobit chapter 3 verse 8. Watch this. Because you, support, you are taking on his name. Look at who Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett Smith. You see that? Her same name comes first. When she's supposed to take the same name of her husband. You understand that? Read what you got. Tobit chapter 3 verse 8. Read that. The book of Tobit chapter 3 verse 8. Read. Because that she had been married to seven husbands. Read. Whom as more as the evil spirit had killed. Go ahead. Before they had laid with her. Before they had sex with her. Before they consummated the marriage. As more has put them to death. Go ahead. Does that not know? Said they. Meaning they were mocking our, our sister here. Go ahead. That thou hast strangled thine husband. You have Because that's what they are. They are speaking evil of our sister. They say she strangled her husbands. Read. Thou hast had already seven husbands. Read. Neither was thou named after any of them. You see that? Neither was thou what? Neither was thou named after any of them. Neither was you named after any of them. Because the woman takes on the same name of her husband when she gets married. But our sisters today, no, they don't do that. Okay, oh please. Read that again. Neither has thou what? Neither was thou named after any of them. Neither was you named after any of them. Why? Because you take on your name the name of your husband when you get married. But you make the wedding day to be about you. You understand? That's why when the husband says, no, we're not going to go to that venue. We're not going to pay for that. Because after the, they're even willing to take loans. They go to the bank and make great debts. They find themselves in the midst of debt just so that on her wedding day, her wedding day can be perfect. That's why they call it my perfect wedding. Not my perfect marriage. No. My perfect wedding. Because it's all for sure. Understand that? That's modern women. That's the reason why 80% of them break their families. You understand? Because it's not honorable marriage to them. But wedding is honorable to them. That's why 80% of them break their families. Understand that? Okay? Now, um, Galatians. Go back there. Galatians chapter 5. You understand? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. Read verse 17 again. No, no, verse 20. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry, read. Witchcraft. Uh huh. Hatred. Read. Variant. Uh huh. Emulation. Emulation. Come on. Red. Strife. Hold on. Emulation. Impersonation. Read that again. Definition of impersonation. Go ahead. Now, mm -hmm. an act of pretending to be another person for the purpose of entertainment. For the purpose of what? For the purpose of entertainment. Read. Really? Or fraud. You say, or fraud. That's why those marriages don't last. Because it's all an act. It's a fraudulent. So they are willing to make this man to invest in them, but they are not investing from the jump. They want a man to invest from the beginning so they can see, you know, I want to see how serious he is. No, sister, we want to see how serious you are. Were you raised to be a wife? No. You are not raised to be a wife. You can't cook, but you know how to make it clap, but you can't cook. No, 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 no. I don't care if you can twerk. Can you cook? You understand? Because the, the, the family is not going to eat your claps. No, no, no. We're not going to eat them. 
You are not going to eat you making a clam. No, we're not doing that. You must know how to cook, sister. You understand? You must know how to cook. I'm going to deal with that in a second. But what I'm showing you is the definition of the tonight's class is called bold women. So that is an acronym. I'm going to deal with the first letter of the acronym, bold. The first letter of the acronym is B, right? Bold. That's it. Bold. That's the first the explanation of the word B in bold. Bold. You see how bold these women are? They are so bold that she'll say, I'll marry you, but me, I'm only interested in the wedding. But she's not going to tell you that. But because you are smitten with the coochie and she knows it, guess what? That's how bold she is. She's going to make that wedding honorable. That's how bold these women They are bold, these women. You understand? Now get the definition of bold now. Get the definition of bold. You understand? You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. Reading from MiriamWebster.com. Go ahead. Definition of bold. Definition of bold. Read. Definition one. Mm -hmm. A. Fearless before danger. No, no, no. That's not it. The other second definition. I think that's what I want. Definition number two. Uh -huh. Impudent. Impudent. The definition of bold means impudent. Go ahead. Presumptuous. Presumptuous. Now click on the click on impudent. Let's see what it means to be impudent. You see, these women are bold. These women are so bold that they'll make you um, get along, pay for the wedding, because that's why they call it my perfect wedding. Make you pay for the wedding. And then now, marriage, now after the wedding, the party is over. Now the marriage, now, now you must focus on your marriage. And they don't know how to do that because they were not raised to be a wife. She is not a traditional woman. She is a modern woman. Now when she's now in the marriage, I get the wedding is over. She's in the marriage now. She is realizing that actually I'm not cut out for this. She is realizing she cannot do the job. What does she do? She escapes. She leaves the marriage. But she got the wedding though. She's got the pictures though. She's got the videos though. They even air, they even broadcasted on DSTV. Isn't that what happened to Mini Jamin? Oh, yes. See, we've got many examples in the media. Those awful examples. But they are examples for us what not to do. Now, read the definition of impudent now. Definition of impudent. Read. Definition one. Uh-huh. Marked by contemptuous or cocky boldness. You see that? Marked by what? Marked by contemptuous. Contemptuous, meaning contemptful read or cocky boldness or cocky boldness you see they are very bold on the wedding day they'll be wearing that long dress the wedding is done she puts on tight pants she wants the whole earth to see how her, how what her husband sees behind closed doors that's how bold these women are they are so bold that listen she gets, she wears a wedding dress because the wedding dress is not tight. The wedding dress are not tight. It's not a tight wedding dress. It's, it's a big wedding dress. Week. You cannot even see her shape. You understand? You cannot even see her shape. We're going over these women that are bold. Bold enough to convince a man. You understand? You understand? To say she wants to get married. And the reason why these men, they marry these type of women, you don't prove these women. Is he proving takes time? There's a, you know, Dala was telling me that um, there was a song back in the day when it says, take time to know her, something like that. Yes, yeah, it's in the Bible. Prove her first and be not hasty to credit her. Because she gives you the coochie, you think that's credit. No, 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 no. Every woman has it, okay? Every woman that comes with that, more. every model comes with it. Understand that? Okay, read the definition of impudent. Reading from MiriamWebster.com. Read. Definition of impudent. Come on. Definition one. Read. Marked by contemptuous or cocky boldness. Or cocky boldness. So bold that they will say, I want to get married. But it's not about the marriage. It's about the wedding. Because modern women, 
Wedding is honorable, is honorable in their eyes. Marriage is dishonorable because they know marriage comes with what? Marriage comes with responsibility. Marriage comes with duty. You understand? They know marriage is duty. The duty of marriage, the responsibility that comes with the duty of marriage. They don't want that. Modern women, they don't want marriage. Modern women want wedding. Because wedding comes with what? Comes with them being the center of attention. That's why modern women, they don't last in, the, in marriages. They get married, but they don't last. Why? Because they marry for wedding, not for marriage. Because marriage comes with duty and responsibility. That's why. That's why 80% of them, they destroy their families. Understand that? Okay, go back. Now read the definition of presumptuous. Okay. Definition of presumptuous. Read. Adjective. Uh -huh. Overstepping. Overstepping, come on. Due bounds. You see that? Overstepping due bounds. We just read it in Jeremiah's. That a woman shall compass a man. Emulation. Overstepping due bounds. Okay? Now, go to Galatians 5 now. Again. Galatians 5, read verse 20 again. And give me the definition of wrath. The book of Galatians. Chapter no, the definition of strife. Strife, that's the one I want. Galatians 5 verse 20. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 20. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry, come on. Witchcraft. Mm. Hatred. Vengeance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Strife. Give me the definition of strife. Because don't forget where we were. Why don't the black women, Israelite women, why can, can they not agree with the black man? Why can they not agree with an Israelite man? Why cannot they? They say the things that the Lord says it makes it glorifies him is a man and a wife that agree together. How come the black woman cannot agree with the black man? What's the problem? We read in the issues right here. Because these black women they are bold. Understand that they are bold, of course. Read it. Definition of strife. Come on. Now mm -hmm. angry or bitter disagreement. What? Angry or bitter disagreement. You see, these women today, these modern women, they are angry women. Not only angry, but they are bitter women. They are bitter and they are angry and they are bitter. You understand? That's the type of that's the, the that's the more that's the characteristics of the modern women today. They are bitter and they are angry. Angry at who? They are angry at the position that God has given to the man. Read again the definition of Strife. Come on. The definition of strife. Mm -hmm. Angry or bitter disagreement. Ang angry or bitter disagreement. Read. Over fundamental issues. Over what? Over fundamental issues. What are the fundamental issues? The roles of men and women in the house. Those are fundamental issues. Role and responsibilities that God has given to the man, that God has given to the woman. The reason why you see the, our, the modern women today, they are bitter, they are angry, cannot take correction. You understand? They, can, they don't like to be told about themselves. They don't like to be told about the standards that they must meet regarding the type of men they want. Is because, read that again. Definition of strife. That's the works of the flesh, by the way. Read. Angry or bitter disagreement. Angry or bitter disagreement. Go ahead. Over fundamental issues. Uh -huh. Conflict. Uh -huh. Conflict. You see that? Give me the synonyms of that. Similar. Uh -huh. Conflict. Conflict. Friction. Friction. Discord. Discord. They're causing problems in the house. Read. Disagreement. Disagreement. They disagree because remember, this woman, she actually disagrees with the Most High God. But she cannot talk, tell the Lord that I hate the role that you gave me. No, 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 no. She's going to tell you that I don't agree with you. But she, she, bas she actually disagrees with the Mosai. Understand that? Read. Dissension. Dissension. Variance. Variance. Dispute. Dispute. Argument. Arguments. You see that? 
She, whatever you tell her, she argues, she argues with you. Why? Because she hates and despises the role that God gave her. That means she's got a demon on her. She's got the devil on her. Understand that. So that's what we that's the works of the flesh. That's the works of the flesh. That's why these modern women cannot keep a man. Cannot get a man, cannot keep a man. Cannot get married, but they can what? They can any they can get a man to sleep with them though. But they cannot get a man to marry her. See which means that she can get a man, but she cannot keep one. And the type of man she gets is not the type of man she wants. Because the type of man she wants is the type of man that has standards and she's not willing to meet them. And that's why now she's angry, she's bitter, she hates men. And when she gives birth to a son, she hates the son she's got. Understand that? That's how bold these women are. That's how bold they are. Now I'm going to show you something. Give me the book. No, 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 no. Actually, before you get there. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me the book of um, give me Sarah 22 verse 4 now. Sarah 22 verse 4. Watch this. We are dealing with the bold in the acronym B. Bold. Read that. Sarah 22 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 verse 4. Watch this. Come on. A wise daughter. A what? A wise daughter. A wise daughter. Come on. Shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Stop right there. A wise daughter. She will bring an inheritance to her what? Will bring an inheritance to her husband. Will bring an inheritance to her husband. So the reason why you see these women, they are bitter, they are angry, they hate men, is because they are realized they cannot admit to themselves that they did not have standards. You know why? Because they did not listen to their fathers. They did not listen to their grandfathers. Because men know men. So when men advise women about men, they don't listen. Because they, they think well, they can pick men. They can pick better. No, you cannot pick better, sister. That's why we have arranged marriages in Israel. Why? Because the leadership will be the one that will choose for you. Why? Because that's how we did it in the past. So we're following after the footsteps of our forefathers because we're going to prove this man on your behalf. Well, now you're not going to know what to look for because you don't know men, but we do. That's why we pick for you. You understand? But they don't listen to men. They hate men. They despise their sons. So, you, they're going to listen to their fathers? No. In fact, what these women do is, when they, this man that they're with, this boy they're with, needs to go and meet their father, they coach them. No, this is what you must say. This is how you must act. This is what you must dress. This is what you must buy. My father likes this, he hates that. My uncle likes that, he don't like that. So when you arrive, you must do this, say this thing, say this and that and the other. You see how simple these women are? Now you're coaching this man to be a pretender when he gets there. You understand? He will play pretend. Because you play pretend. You see how this works? You play pretend, so you coaching him to play pretend. And then now when he, be, when he becomes the demon that he really is, now you, you, you hate men. But you chose, you got what you deserve, because that's what you chose. You understand that? You chose, you got what you deserve, sister. So don't be crying. Repent. Keep God's commandments. And learn to take correction and counsel. Understand that? Now read that again. Verse 4, Sarah 22. Deborah of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 4. Read. A wise daughter. A wise daughter, go ahead. Shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Now I'm going to deal with that inheritance part. The first inheritance that a wise daughter will bring to her husband is what? Give me Sarah 17, verse 11. Sarah 17, verse 11. This is the, when it goes into inheritance, this is the first inheritance that she will bring to her husband. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 11. Read. Beside this, uh -huh. he gave them knowledge. He gave them knowledge. Go ahead. And the law of, of life. And the what? And the law of life. And the law of life. That's God's commandments. Read. For, in, for inheritance. For inheritance. So the inheritance that this woman will bring to her husband, first and foremost, is what? Wisdom. She's well instructed by her parents. Her parents groomed her and prepared her to be a wife. She was raised to be a wife. 
That's the, the first inheritance she brings to her husband is that she was raised to be a wife. She was groomed to be one. You understand? So she's, she knows, she's going to know what to do when she gets married. She'll know exactly what to do in her house. She'll know exactly how to treat this man. She'll know exactly how to reverence this man because she was groomed to be a wife. That's what we're doing right now in SOC. That's what we're doing right now in Israel to groom the sisters to become wives. You understand? Give me that in Surah 24, 23. Okay? Ecclesiasticus 24, 23. That's the first inheritance. You understand? Being prepared to be a wife. That's what she's going to bring to her husband. Because a, a modern woman, what, what inheritance is she going to bring to her husband? What, what is she going to bring? She's going to bring a big mouth and a big booty. That's it. That's what she's bringing to her husband. That's what modern women bring to their husband. Because she thinks that's an asset. No, sister. That's not an asset. Because every woman has one. So it's not, you're not special because every woman has what you've got. The thing that's between your knees. Because that's what you trust upon. Okay? And that's what these 30 year old grandmothers teach their daughters now. Read them. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, verse 23. Read. All these things are written. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Mosai, of the Mosai God. Go ahead. Even the law which Moses commanded for inheritance. Even what? Even the law which Moses commanded for an inheritance. You see that? Which even the law, indeed the law, which Moses commanded for an heritage. So the heritage that she's going to bring is God's laws. Understand that? Not, not God's laws as in, I'm going to bring a Bible to you. No, don't be simple. She's bringing the teachings that she got because she was groomed to be a wife. That's the assets that she's bringing. You understand? Okay? Give me that in Susanna chapter 1 verse 1. I'm going to give an example of our foremother. Okay, Susanna. Okay? The inheritance that she brought to her husband. Watch this. Read that. The history of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. There dwelt a man in Babylon uh -huh. called Joachim. Read. And he took a wife. Mm -hmm. He took a what? And he took a wife. He took a wife. Remember, this is our forefathers. These were men of counsel, of law and judgment. They understood times and judgment. Read. Whose name was Susanna. Susanna. Okay, come on. The daughter of Chelsius, mm -hmm. a very fair woman. And one that feared the Lord. You see that? She was beautiful and she was wise. Today, our sisters now, they just bring a pretty face and a big booty. No. Sister, that's not an asset that you want to bring to the house. No, 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 no. We don't want that. We, this, this, you are looking at new breed of black men. We are the new breed of black men. Understand that. Read that Bible again. Verse 2. Come on. The history of Susanna, verse 2. Read. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, uh -huh. the daughter of Chelsea, a very fair woman. Read. And one that feareth the Lord. You see that? And one that feareth the Lord. Go ahead. Her parents also were righteous. You see that? Her parents also were righteous. That's why Joachim was able to marry our sister, jo Susanna. Because her parents were righteous. What did they do? Go ahead. And taught their daughter. And did what? And taught their daughter. They groomed their daughter to be a wife. She was raised to be a wife. Go ahead. According to the law of Moses. You see that thing right there? So that's the asset. That's the inheritance she's bringing. Because she was raised to be a, to be a wife. She was not raised to be an independent black ashy demon. No. She was raised to be a wife. You understand? That's why him, her and her husband will grow aged together. Will grow old together. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Titus chapter 2 verse 3. I'm going to show you what her parents did. Her mother, what her mother did for her at the command of her father. Watch this. Read that in Titus 2 verse 3. Come on. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Read. The aged woman likewise. The aged woman was Susanna's mother. She was the aged woman. Read. That they be in behavior. She was in behavior. Come on. As become a holiness. Because she kept the commandment she taught her daughter God's laws. Read. Not false accused. She was not a gossip. Read. Not given to much wine. She was not a drunkard because today you see our sisters carry Amstead. 
eh? Kari black label, eh? Kari um, milk stout. You see her sister, wait, first thing in the morning, she's holding a hind again. What is that? When I put her face in the beer, who just part? She's wearing a mini skirt, mwana shoe. Here's the baby walking around. Because that's what we have to do. The, the, listen, that's the modern woman. That, pray, praise the Lord that you are in this truth. You are being prepared to be, a, what, to be a leader in Israel. And sisters are being prepared to be wives. You understand? Go ahead. Teachers of good things. You see that Susanna's mother was a teacher of good things. She taught her, daughters the, her daughter the law of Moses. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. So the young woman in this instance is our foremother Suzanne. Go ahead. To love their husband. Because the, our foremother, our, the, Susanna's mother taught her daughter how to love Joachim, her husband. Read. To love their children. Not only that, but she, they taught her how to love her children. Understand that thing. So that's the example that our foremothers left behind. So it says to love her, their husbands. How do they do it? How, did, so how was our foremother Susanna like? How did she love her husband, Manessas? I mean, Joachim, excuse me. I'm thinking about our foremother, Judith. Give me Sarah 26 and 1. Get the definition of virtuous woman. Get the definition of virtuous woman. Okay? Sarah 26 and 1 and hold it. The definition of virtuous. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. You see that? So, so we're going to find out what a virtuous woman is. So if you don't have a, if you are not a virtuous woman, your husband is cursed. Just think about that thing. Read that verse again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. Go ahead. For the number of his days shall be doubled. So if you have a, if you don't have, if guess what? The opposite of a virtuous wife is a modern woman. The opposite of a virtuous wife is the modern woman. Now get the definition of virtuous woman. Do you have it? Yes, sir. Read it. Yeah, read it. Come on. Definition of virtuous woman. Read. She is a strong woman, a woman with a great heart. No, 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 no. Virtuous. Virtuous. Yeah, man. Now I'm I'm hearing the definition of an independent black Asian woman. No, 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 no. We don't want that. Okay. Definition of virtuous. Read. Having or showing high moral standards. That's it right there. Having or showing high moral standards. So a woman, a virtuous woman, is a woman that has virtuous, is a woman that has high moral standards. Our foremother Susanna, she had a what? She had high moral standards. That's why Joachim was able to marry her, to take her to be a wife. You understand? She had the honor of being a wife. And she gave him the honor of what? Of being a father. By giving what? By giving birth to what? To, they were giving by, by bathing children for him. Now watch this. Give me, because you might think I made that up. Get that in Susanna. Real quick. Yeah, Susanna chapter 1 verse, verse 29. Watch this. History of Susanna chapter 1 verse 29. Go ahead. And said before the people. Mm-hmm. Send for Susanna, the daughter of Celsius, Read. Joachim's wife. Go ahead. And so they sent. Read. So she came with her father. She, and came, she came with her parents. Read. Her children. Her what? Her children. Her what? Her children. Her children. Read. And all her kindred. You see that? So Susanna had children. So she gave Joachim the honor of being a father by bathing children for him. So, we didn't make that up. Highlight that. Put it in your notebook. Okay? So now, watch this. Um, Sirach 26 and 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Read. Blessed is the man 
that has a virtuous wife. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. Go ahead. For the number of his days shall be doubled. So if you don't have a woman that has high moral standards, which is modern women, modern women have no more, have no standards whatsoever. Modern women today, they have no standards. That's why many of them, they are, they are quote-unquote highly educated, but she cannot keep a man. She's got a PhD, but she's a baby mama. She's got a master's, but she's got two, two kids from two different baby daddies. That woman, she's not educated. That's a simp. That's a bum. Because we've got women that are bums. That's a bum. She's, she's a bum with a PhD. Let me say that again. She's a bum with a PhD and a master's because she cannot keep a man. She does not have emotional intelligence as they call it in the world. Meaning what? She does not have high moral standards. Because what about morality? They don't care about that. She slips away to the top. She says she's a boss chick. But guess what? She cannot keep a man. Her children are cursed. You understand? Get that in Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to show you that. Yep, Wisdom of Solomon. Watch this. Yep, it's in Wisdom of Solomon, right? Watch this. Mm. Yep, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 16. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 16. Start of verse 12. Watch this. Verse 12. Uh-huh. Their wives are foolish. Because they make foolish wives if they get married. If by adventure they get married, they make foolish wives. That's why 80% of them, they break their families. 80% of modern women today, they cannot keep their families. They cannot keep a man. They divorce. Read. And their children wicked. You see that? Their children are evil. They've got evil children. Go ahead. Now jump down. To verse 16 now. Watch this. Verse 16. Read. As for the children of adulterers. If, as, for, as for the children of adulterers. Go ahead. They shall not come to their perfection. They will never come to their perfection. Until their mothers repent and fall within the role that God gave them. Go ahead. And the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. When the Lord returns. They will not be in the kingdom. That's what we're reading here. This is some heavy stuff, brothers. This is some heavy stuff. So these modern women, they don't understand. They think because she's got a PhD, she earns more than her men. She thinks she's on top of the world. She thinks she wears pants in the house. No, sister. Your money does not make you to be 50-50 to be with your husband. Because it's got nothing to do with money. It's got everything to do with the role that God gave you and the fulfillment of that role that God gave you. And do it with a smile. Happy husband, happy life. There's no happy wife, happy life. Mm -mm, that's feminism. Happy husband, happy life. Your job is to make your husband happy. That's your duty. You understand? Your husband makes you happy by paying the bills and protecting you. And being the prophet in the house. And you being the disciple. Sarah 26 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Read. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. So cursed is the man that has a modern woman as a wife. Read. For the number of his days shall be doubled. The number of your days will be shortened. You married to a modern woman, the number of your days will be shortened. The number of your marriage, the, num the, the days of your marriage also will be shortened too. Because 80% of them, they leave. Because they just got the satisfaction of being a what? Of be, uh, being on in the uh, be, being at a wedding. And she just happened to be the bride. That's why many of them it says, no, I've been engaged four times. I've been divorced eight times. And they say it like it's something to be proud of. No, sister, you damaged goods. You stay over there in the corner somewhere. Okay? Read. A virtuous woman. Rejoice as a husband. You see, that's your job, sister. Your job is to rejoice your husband. You see, these are the inheritance that you bring to your husband. Because you thought your inheritance, number one, is your PhD. No, 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 no. We don't care about your PhD. We don't care about your master's. We don't care about your degree either. We don't give a damn about that. This is what we care about. You see that? Traditional men, the, the Israelite men, 
the repenting Israelite man, this is what we care about, sister. This is the standard. You understand? Read verse 2 again. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 2. Read. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. Because a woman that has high moral standards, she understands her role. Her role, number one, is to rejoice her husband. But the modern woman, she wants the man to chase after her and rejoice her and make her happy. That's why it says, why did you leave, sister? Why did you break your family? No, I wasn't happy. That's the modern woman. A traditional woman, a traditional woman, because a traditional woman, she's, she becomes a wife. She knows her job. Her, is to, her job is to rejoice her husband. She does it with joy until the day of her death. Go ahead. And, and he shall fulfill and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. But you've got a woman, you may, you've got a modern woman, you're not going to fulfill the, the days of your life, the years of your life in peace. No, no, no. She's a pillar of stress upon you. She's not going to bring peace to your house. She's not going to bring peace to your life. She's going to bring chaos, drama, confusion, evil, and noise. And don't forget the PhD. Don't forget the deep ditch. Because that's what she's going to bring for you. She's got a PhD, but she's got a deep ditch. So that's the asset she thinks she's bringing to the table. Sister, what are you bringing to the table? I've got a PhD. Sister, your PhD is not going to make you, it's not going to fulfill the role that God gave you. What else you got? No, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm loving. No, sister, are you submissive? Don't tell me if you're loving. Because you tell me what you think I want. No, no, I'm going to tell you what God says I must want. You must be submissive. You must bring joy to my life because you are a help meet. My job is not to make you happy. My job is not to be romantic. My version of romance is what? Paying the bills. You understand? Being the protector of the house. Being the provider of the house. Being the priest or the prophet of the house. That's my job. That's my version of romance. Your vision of romance is to do this candle, what, what, tea, flowers and all that. That's your job. My job is not, no, 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 no. Because today they want men to be buying flowers all over the place. You don't read that in the Bible. Abraham going around, uh, you know, chopping flowers, bringing to Sarah, his wife. No, you don't see that. You don't see that stuff. Brothers, don't be walking around, be buying flowers. I'm wearing tulips for my wife. What? She must go and buy the tulips and put them in the house. When you walk in, you see the flowers. Mm, those are nice. Mm. That's it. Your version of romance is that she's not sleeping on the streets. That's your version of romance. Because that's the job of a man. Because sisters will tell you, no, I want a man to have a job. Sister, are you submissive? Are you cooperative? Are you feminine? Mm? Are you supportive? Mm? Sister? Because that's what we want. And that's what God says we must want. We want that day. If you're not it, we, sister, I'm not your type. Let me say it again. Sister, I'm not your type. No, no, I'm not. I'm not your type. Now, watch this. What verse we are? Verse 2, sir. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 2. Read. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. That's her job. Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Because you might think I'm making it up when it says you must be submissive, you must be cooperative, you must be feminine, you must be all that, right? They think, no, 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 let's read it in the Bible. The most High God put that thing down. You understand? Give me Sarah 36. Yep. Sarah 36 verse 22. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36 verse 22. Watch this. Come on. The beauty of a woman uh -huh. shares the countenance. You see, a beautiful woman makes us happy. Brothers, don't be afraid to say, the Bible is written in right there, says, the beauty of a woman shares the countenance of a man. Yes, men love beautiful women. It's in the Bible, it's right there. You say, you don't like it, take it up with the most high. Keep reading. And a man loveth nothing better. There it is. And a man loveth nothing better. You understand? Go ahead. If, the, if, if, that's the condition, that's the stipulation. Sister, don't just be bringing your pretty, pretty face. 
Don't just be hanging on verse 22. Verse 22 must come with verse 23. Read verse 23. That's the condition though. Read it. Verse 23. Go ahead. If there be kindness. If there be what? If there be kindness. If you are feminine. If you've got a pretty face, sister, you must be feminine. You understand? Don't come with that manly spirit. Because I'm an alpha. I will rip your hair off with this Bible. Understand that? Read. Me, I don't take no prisoners when it comes to alpha females. And that thing is a freak of nature. There's no such thing as an alpha female. What the hell is that? Read. Meekness. Meekness. She's submissive. You must be feminine, submissive. That's meekness. Read. And comfort. And comfort. Read. In her tongue. In her tongue. Meaning supportive. In her tongue. Meaning you don't have a big mouth. You breathe life into this man. This is, the, this is the type of woman God says we must want. Read. Then is not a husband like other men. Modern women cannot do this. Modern women cannot provide this thing. Modern women cannot meet these standards. Only traditional women will be able to meet these standards because why? They are willing to be groomed to be wives according to the laws of God. But modern women, brothers, do not be looking for a modern woman. Modern women, that's a Jezebel. Modern women are Jezebels until they repent. Modern women, they are enemies of God until they repent. Modern women, they are enemies of marriage. Stay away from them until they repent. Modern women, you stay away from them. We are not their type. You understand? But we are the type to traditional women. Because those make wives. That's what we're looking for. That's what the sisters in the congregation are looking for. And men haven't changed. We've always been traditional, brothers. From the beginning of time, from the time of Genesis, we've been traditional. The people that have changed is women because women shall compass a man. They are the ones that have changed. Men haven't changed. We've been protective. We've been providers. We've been priests and prophets. That hasn't changed. We've been doing that. You understand? So now that, now that we have the Holy Scriptures in our hands to comfort us, listen, you cannot touch us now. We're not going to fall for the okie dog. Understand that thing. Now, watch this. Give me the book. Uh, give me Zrak. Uh, no, no, go back. Go back. Go back to Titus 2. Go back to Titus 2. I haven't forgotten that. Go back to Titus 2 verse 4 again. Watch this. We're still dealing with the inheritance that this woman brings to her husband. This woman right here that we're reading about, this woman is not bold. This is not a bold woman right here. A bold woman is a modern woman. Modern women are bold women. Read that. Titus 2 verse 4. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 4. I know there's a feminist woman right now online saying, yeah, because you cannot handle a strong, black, independent woman. Sister, you stay in that corner right there and with that dog. Read the Bible. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. That they may teach the young women. That they may teach the, young, the older women will teach the young women. Go ahead. To be sober. To be sober. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Go ahead. To love their children. Read. To be discreet. To be what? To be discreet. Meaning they must have discretion. Modern women have no discretion. Modern women, they are loud mouths. Modern women, they have no breaks. Modern women think their mouth is their weapon. Read. Come on. To be discreet. To be discreet, meaning they have decorum. They are chaste. Read. Chaste. Uh -huh. Keep us at home. What? Keep us at home. So they are discreet. But to the, modern women are not discreet. Look at, look at what they do on TikTok. Modern women are not, excuse me, modern women have no discretion, brothers. I hope you understand that. Modern women have no discretion. Modern women, they are shameless. Understand that? Just go to TikTok and you'll see how shameless modern women are. How shameless modern women have become. We understand? Give me Sarah 26 verse 13. Stay focused. Come on, brothers. Sarah 26 verse 13. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 18. Read. The grace of a wife. The what? The grace of a wife. The grace of a wife goes into what? Her character. 
her decorum. You understand? She's got bedside manners. She knows when to speak, when to say, when to be quiet. You understand? She knows she's she she is she's easy for her for to listen than to speak. That's the grace of a wife. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. How? She's submissive, she's cooperative, you understand? She's feminine, she's supportive. Read. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. You see that? Read. And her discretion. And her what? And her discretion. And her discretion, come on. Will fatten his bow. Will fatten his mind. Will fatten his mind. She'll be a pillar of rest to her husband. You understand that? That's what we're reading right here. Now, um, where were we at? Titus. Go back to Titus, chapter 2. Read verse 5 now again. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. To be discreet. To be discreet. Chased. Chased. Keep us at home. Keep us at home. What did that mean, keep us at home? Meaning she has to have skills. We read the first inheritance, which is what? Being groomed to be a wife. You understand? She's submissive, she's cooperative, she's feminine, and she's supportive. Not only that, but she's got skills. Give me that in uh, Toby 2 verse 11. This is what we're reading here. This woman right here, this is an asset. This woman right here we're reading about, this woman is priceless. You cannot put a price on a woman like this. Modern women, I know right now, you twitching like a robin. Hold this. Give me that in second answers. Okay. This is what modern women are doing right now online. Watch this. Modern women, just be quiet. Listen and learn. You understand? Um, yeah, second answers chapter 16, read verse 49. Watch this. Modern women, they are twitching like robots right now. Sisters, just listen and learn. Humble yourself and repent. And be a traditional woman. Read what you got. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 29. Read. As in an orchard of olives. No, 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 no. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 49. What did you say? Come on, stay Second with Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 49. Watch this, come on. Likewise. No, 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 no. What verse you in? Verse 49. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 49. Read. Like as a whole. Like as a whole. Go ahead. Envieth, envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. You see, modern women are teaching like robots right now. Like as a whole, envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Modern women right now, they hate the characteristics of a virtuous woman right now online. Sisters, stay in the spirit. You'll be fine. Repent. Get it together. Okay, go back to Titus. Titus chapter 2. Read verse 5. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. To be discreet. To be discreet. Chase. Which modern women have none. Read. Keep us at home. Keep us at home. Keep us, keep us at home. Keep us at home means what? Toby 2, verse 11 now. This is what it means, keep us at home. Watch this. Keep us at home. Read that. Come on, come on. The book of Toby, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. And my wife Anna. My wife Anna, not my girlfriend. My wife. Go ahead. Did take women's works to do. She took women's works to do. That means our foremother Anna. She had skills. That's why it says keep us at home. She took care of her house. She's got she got skills. Give me that in Acts chapter 9, verse 36. I'm gonna show you another example of our foremother Tabitha. Okay? She took women's works to do, following after the footsteps of her foremother mother before her. Read that. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Watch this. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha. Tabitha. Because we there, there was women disciples. A disciple just means a student. Okay. Read. Which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Dorcas. Come on. This woman was full of good works. This woman was full of good works. This is our former the Tabitha. Go ahead. And arms deeds. And arms deeds which she did. Go ahead. Which she did. Read. And it came to pass in those days. Read. That she was sick and died. Meaning our former the time that she was sick and she died. Watch this. Whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. They laid our former the Tabitha in the upper chamber. Go ahead. 
And for as much as Leda was nigh to Joppa, mm -hmm. and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. Peter was there. Peter was Peter was where? Peter was in Leda. Joppa is not far from Leda, where the apostle Peter was. Go ahead. They sent unto him two mm -hmm. men. Really? Desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Because they wanted the apostle Peter to come to Joppa, where our former the Tabitha was. Go ahead, watch this. Then Peter arose and went with them. Mm. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. Where our former the Tabitha was, because she had died. Read. And all the widows, and all the widows stood by him weeping. And all the widows stood by weeping. Because they were weeping because she had died. They were mourning for her. Go ahead. And showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made. You see that they were showing the garments and the coats which our former Tabitha had made. Made our former Tabitha. She had skills. Read. While she was with them. Uh -huh. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. Mm. And telling him to the body said. Read. Tabitha. Tabitha. Come on. Arise. Arise. Meaning this woman, she was full of wit, was so much so that the apostle Peter says, I gotta bring the sister back to life. Mm. That's some beautiful stuff right there, man. So today when you hear sister say, I'm a PhD, sister, please, just be quiet. Your PhD is not going to do nothing. Your PhD is not going to make the, post, the apostles bring you back to life when you drop dead. Read. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. You see that she sat up when they saw she saw the apostle Peter. Come on. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Mm. And when he had called the saints and widows, mm. presented her alive. You see that thing? She brought the sister back to life, man. Give me that in First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 17. Watch this. Okay. You see, our four mothers, they were about their father's business. They are about the nation. They are, they are, because if your degree, sister, does not benefit our people, to hell with you, with you and your degree. To hell with you and your PhD. You understand? I'm going to tell you straight up. You modern women, it's time for you to repent. You understand? You modern women, it's time for you to repent. Because your foremothers, they actually had more than you do. Because you think because when you are quote-unquote educated, Guess what? You think you're better than your grandmother that came before you. No, no, no. Your grandmother actually had more than you. What did she have? A husband, which you don't have. You have none. She's got 100% more than you, you do now with your PhD. Understand that? Read. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. These also make garments for men. You see that these also make garments for men. That's what our former the Tabitha did. She made garments for the men. She supported the, the men of Israel, the men of war. She dressed them up. Read. These bring glory unto men. You see that thing? They brought glory unto the men of Israel, men of war. What time is it? What time? What time is it? What time? Oh, please. Keep going. And without women cannot men be. You see that? Because they understood their roles. Understand that. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 13. Proverbs 31, verse 13. Because they, they, they listen. A sister that's not bold, this is the characteristics of a, of a traditional woman. Modern women don't fit this. Modern women cannot come close to this. Modern women, they are unqualified to be wives. Modern women are not qualified to be wives. That's why they are hoes. That's why they're baby mamas. That's why they've got four kids, four different baby daddies. Because they are modern women with their PhD. She cannot keep a man. Why? Because she don't want to humble herself to the laws of God. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 18. Come on. She seeketh wool and flax. She seeketh wool and flax. Read. And worketh willingly with her hand. And she does what? And worketh willingly with her hand. And she worketh willingly with her hands. She doesn't have to be forced to do nothing. She's proactive. And she does it with joy and gladness. Why? Because she knows she's going to what? Her husband is going to be glad for this. Read. She's like the merchant ship. She's like the merchant ship. She's business minded. She's industrious. Read. She bringeth her food from afar. Meaning she knows where the best food is bought. 
She knows where the best and healthy food is bought. She knows the prices of different stores and what they sell and how much they cost. She knows all that because she does research. Go ahead. She riseth also while it is yet night. You see that she's not a bum. This woman, she's not a bum. You understand? Read. And giveth meat to her household. And she giveth food to her household. Go ahead. And a portion to her maiden. And a portion to her maidens. Read. She considereth a field. She considers a field. And buyeth it. She, you see that? She's even thinks, man, let me buy a property. You understand? Read. Because she's got skills. Go ahead. With the fruit of her hands. With the fruit of her hands. Go ahead. She planted a vineyard. Because, and this vineyard is not for her. Is for a household because he said she looked well to her household. But today, modern women they said, No, that's my money. Okay, yeah, I work hard for this degree. I outgrew my husband. Mm. You grow, you get married to this man, and this man, guess what? You get some kind of education. Now you think your education makes you better than your husband. You simple as hell, sister. Your PhD don't teach you nothing. Your masters don't, because I know there's a feminist right now, she's saying, okay, so you were intimidated by educated women. No, sister, you're not educated. Let me show you what it means to be educated. Hold that. Give me Joshua 1 verse 8. You see, this is what it means to be educated, sister. Yes, sister, I know what I said. Educated. Now read that. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 verse 8. Read. This book of the law. No, 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 no. This book of sociology. This book of the law. Because these sisters, they be getting these useless degrees. Ne? They don't do these degrees of um, science, engineering, and mathematics. They call it STEM. Yeah, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You don't find a whole lot of sisters in that field. No? You don't see sisters doing... That's why they are pushing the sisters in... They say women in engineering, women in IT. Because they are, the white man is forcing things that sisters don't want to do. So the ones that are doing it is the ones that say, yeah, we're going to violate what the Lord is saying. We're not saying a sister cannot get an engineering degree. Don't get it twisted. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that the degree, you, cannot, you, you can be in the office environment. That's fine. You can't be out there building machinery. You understand? Wearing boots and a helmet. What the hell are you doing? Because hmm? I see them, you know, with the pick it up with Jobek Road Agent, JRA, ne? Jobek Road Agency. You see sisters wearing pants, carry helmet, eh? you know, as if they are measuring stuff. Sister, stop. Stop it, man. Huh? Stay in your lane. Be feminine. That thing is not going to make you feminine. That's why in the weekend, Ubizika Heineke. Because it reminds you of that hammer that you'll be swinging in Kospani. No, sister, please. Yeah. Just get a job that is going to maintain your femininity. How about that? Hmm? What I'm saying, you cannot be, a, you cannot get a, a good job. You cannot be a CEO. We are not saying that, sister. Because I know right now, sisters be twitching like robots. You thinking, oh, so now you want me to sit at home. If your husband says, I want you to be a stay, a stay a, be a housewife. You're going to do it because why? He will take care of you. Your job is to educate the children. Because that's a bigger job than that PhD. Because that's your role. So you're going to hire a nanny who's going to look after your child. So why can't I marry the nanny then? The hell is this? So how about that? So let me marry the nanny because she's going to do everything that a traditional wife is supposed to do. And you go and be single with your PhD and buy a dog or an elephant and you die with it. How about that? No, see, we're not playing. We're building our nation back up and marriage is at the center of it. Not wedding, marriage. Because marriage is honorable in the mind of a traditional woman. Wedding is honorable in the mind of a modern woman. Understand that? Okay. What verse you went? Joshua 1 and 8, sir. Read it. In case yeah. I forget my thought. Read that. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Read this book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Shall not depart out of your, out of your mouth. Go ahead. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. But you must meditate upon the, the book of the laws 
day and night. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You must obey what is written. Read. For then. And then, once you obey, you meditate. The book of the laws that not depart your mouth. What's going to happen? For then. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You're going to make your way prosperous. You modern women, you're not prosperous. The, the pastors have lied to you. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. Then you're going to have good success. Because keeping God's laws, that's the only success that the Lord talks about. Here you are, you are a medical doctor, sister. Yes, we know you are a medical doctor. You are a medical practitioner. But when you knock off at the hospital... You are going to the club to look for a, a one night stand. So, what is your doc, what what is your medical degree good for? Hmm? Tell us. You've got a PhD in sociology, that demonic useless degree. But at the end of your shift, guess where you go? You go to the club. You go and drink until you puke. You don't even remember your name. You don't know how many men you slept with. You don't know who the baby the baby daddy is because you slept with so many men on that day. You don't remember. So are you successful, sister? Hmm? When you are a come bucket? No, sister. That's not being successful. You're changing men every now and again. Sister, you're not successful. Keep the laws of God. That's the true success. Understand that. You're not going to fool us. You're dealing with a new breed of black men. You understand? Away with feminism, away. Understand that? Okay? What verse you at? Go back. Proverbs 31. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 16. Read. She called, verse 15. No, 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 not 15. Verse 16. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 16. Watch this. She considered the field. We are dealing with keepers at home. This is what it means, keepers at home here. Read. She considereth the field. She considereth the field. Read. And buyeth it. And buyeth it. Go ahead. With the fruit of her head. Uh huh. She planted a vineyard. You see that? Go ahead. She gathered her loins with strength. Mm. And strengthened her arm. Because why? This woman works willingly with her hands. Go ahead. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Read. Her candle goeth not out by night. Because this woman, she looketh good to her house. Because, you know, I. You know, like, ne, I go to the Bundus, ne, I see my mother. I mean, she's in her 90s now. She's old. But guess what? My mother, she's actually stronger than many of these modern women. She's old. She's got a hoary head. You understand? But my mother wakes up before everybody. She's the last one to go to sleep. And to this day. Her and my father, they've been married for more than 50 years. They've been married. You understand? So, I know for a fact she's a virtuous woman. Don't get it twisted. She dress nice. She's always modest. You understand? She covers her head and all that. She, she, what we're reading in Proverbs 31, I've seen my mother do it. She's still doing it unto this very day. Because I'll be at home, I'm like, but you've been working the whole day. It's like, listen, I'm going to sit and do what? Hmm? That's her mindset. She still goes to the bushes and cut wood for fire in the house. Listen, she's still doing that. 90 years old somewhere there. She's still doing that. That's some heavy stuff, man. That's some heavy stuff. Go ahead. She lays her hands to the spindle. She to the spindle. She lays her hands to the spindle. She lays her hands to the spindle. Go ahead. And her hands hold the distaff. Because she she what? She used cotton. She turns cotton into wool and she sews. Read. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Okay, that's it on the jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Read. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. You see that? She's not too, she's not afraid to get her hands dirty for her for her household. She's willing to go out. There's a snow. She'll go out. Yeah, there's, there's rain. She said, no, 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 no. I still got to go and get some, some fruits and vegetables for my family. Go ahead. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. You see that thing? Because she's always concerned about her house. Read. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Mm. Her clothing is silk and pepper. Meaning she sews. Like Tabitha, our foremother. Go ahead. Watch this. Her husband is known in the gate. All praises to the most high God. Go ahead. When he seated among the elders of the land. 
Some beautiful stuff right there, brothers. This is beautiful. Now, jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. Read. She looketh well to the ways of her household. You see that? She looketh well to the ways of her household. But today, modern women, she get a PhD. She get a master's. Guess what? She says, I outgrew my husband. What that means, sister? What do you mean you outgrew your husband? No, I, we are no longer on the same level. How? No, because now I'm educated and all that. Okay, but so what does that have to do with you being a wife? What does that have to do with it? Because you know why? You know what she you know what they don't say? Why she's not saying that. Let me show you the, the background demon that's running. I'm talking software now. There's a demon that's running in the background. The background demon, now in Bible talk, the background demonic activity that's running is this. She's thinking to herself, you know, all the hours I put in to do this degree, the study, the studying I had to do, I want to enjoy my money. But she'll never say that out loud. But that's what she's saying, though. When he say, I outgrew my husband. No, she means all the effort that I put in to get this degree, I actually want to go out there and jolla and go out to parties and meet people that are on my in my in my in my in on my radar. That's what she's saying. She's not gonna tell you that though. Because modern women are liars. That's another thing that you must understand. Modern women, they are liars, they lie. You understand? They lie. Understand that. Okay. Now, keep reading. Verse 28 now. Verse 28. Read. No, no, verse 27. Finish verse 27. I'm sorry. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 27. Read. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Go ahead. And eateth not the bread of idleness. This woman, she's not idle. Because idleness teacheth much evil. So she understands that already. Read. Her children arise up and call her blessed. You see that? Read. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Stop right there. Read that part again, because I know some sins up in here are being activated. Read the Bible again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 28. Read. Her children arise up mm -hmm. and call her blessed. Read. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. You know what it means when it's her husband also praises her and he praises her? Because... The, 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 the virtuous woman's praise Gonna come from her husband How? Because the husband will be able to see that You know what? My wife She's actually applying herself To what the Bible says Remember It says can two work together Lest they be agreed So the agreement is based on God's laws You understand that? So but whenever you hear women Praising other women No, 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 no Women, because women, when they praise other, when they praise other women, guess what? They give them an overinflated self sense of self importance. That's what they do. Oh, girl, you know that thing is so nice. Oh, you know, you know your hair is so nice. Even when it's garbage, they wanna say that. I'm telling you, even when the lo a woman looks like a rag of muffins, they still gonna tell her, "No, sister, you look beautiful and all that." Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Women must be praised by her, their husbands because they comp them the the compliment that matters the most is the one that comes from her husband not other women the reason why you see today black women don't want to hear what black men have to say because black men will tell the truth and not have any filter black women though black women don't check other black women black women they are the ones that make women leave their marriages a woman has a problem in her marriage she does not go to a woman that's married. No, she go to that black ashy woman, that bald-headed demon. Like they said that movie. Was it uh, Blackanda? Womanda? Yeah, yeah, that Womanda forever. That's the one, right? Yes. Black women keep, women keep women single. That's what Kevin Samuels will say. And that's true. Because they will compliment each other even when they are wrong. They don't want to check each other. When they are in, when they are, when they are, when they are completely out the way. So the important compliment that a woman receives is from her husband. Because her husband will compliment that why? Because she's in her role and she's fulfilling it according to what thus saith the Lord. 
I hope you sisters are listening to this thing. Understand that that group hug or sisterhood, that's not in the Bible, by the way. Stop it. Now, uh, verse 31. Verse 31. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 31. Read verse 30, actually. Verse 30. Read. Favor is deceitful. You see, what is the favor? YouTube likes, YouTube compliments, because that they do it for what? They do it for fame. They do it for what? They do it for the cloud. Isn't that what they say? They do it for cloud, right? Yes. yes. That's why it says favor is deceitful. What is the favor today? Social media. Social media. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful. Read. And beauty is vain. And beauty is vain because you're not going to look like that forever. Gravity will take place. Old age will come in. You're not going to look the way you look when you are 20 years old. Read. But a woman that feareth the Lord. But a woman that fears the Lord. Go ahead. She shall be praised. By her husband. But a woman that fears the Lord. She shall be praised. For her what? For her fear of the Lord. Not for her what? Not for her beauty. Because it's, it's vain. That's why it says beauty is vain. It's not going to look like that forever. It's going to look like that forever. In the eyes of her husband. Yes. But it's not going to look like that forever in this baby, in this, um, in this man that you sleep with. The minute you start to look like a granny, they're not going to look at you. The minute that thing becomes stretched like a, like, a, like a parachute, they are not going to look at you. They're going to look for the young ones now. You see, these modern women, they have no sense. But today is your day. We're giving you the sense out of God's laws. Now, go back to Titus. I even forgot my point. Titus 2, verse 5. I know a feminist right now, she's choking. Sister, drink some more, Tony. In the spirit of the Lord. Titus 2, verse 5. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. To be discreet. To be discreet. Chase. Uh -huh. Keep us at home. That's what we read. That's what it means, keep us at home. We went over that. Go ahead. Good. Uh -huh. Obedient to their own husband. That's it right there. Modern women don't know what it means to be obedient to their own husbands because they don't have husbands. And if she's married, she's married to a simp. She's married to a man that worships the ground she walks on. And that's what they want. You see, modern women cannot deal with men like us. That's why when we go to the street, when we are on the street teaching, what do they say? What Do they have wives? I wonder if they have wives. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And guess what? The sisters in the congregation that are married, sisters, they love it. And the sisters that are being prepared for marriage, they love it. Hmm? They love it. You understand? They love that thing. Now, it says obedient to their own husbands. You see that? Give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Because they are submissive. A virtuous woman is submissive. A virtuous woman is a traditional woman. She is submissive. And she understands that. And she does it with all the joy in the world. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. She understands us God. Watch this. Read it. 1 book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know. Read. That the head of every man is Christ. I know a feminist right now. She bless it. She is probably frozen because she has been preaching this whole time. Go ahead. But I would have you know. That the head of every man is Christ. The head of the black man is Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the black woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. The virtuous woman, the traditional traditional women, they know all this. Traditional women, they don't have to be convinced on this wise. They know this. Modern women, on the other hand, they have no understanding of what we just read. You understand? Give me that in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Because I know they brought this out with a black mark. They brought Ephesians. Just get a, the Bible of a modern woman. This is blacked out or the page has been ripped out. Read that in Ephesians 5 22. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Black highlighter. Who does that? Who, who buys a black highlighter? But the modern woman, that's what they do. Read that. Wives, 
Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. You see that? Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Go ahead. As unto the Lord. The same way you would submit to the black Messiah Jesus the Christ, submit to the black man who is your Lord in the house. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. No, they are 50 50. For the husband is the head of the wife. No, I, outgrew, I outgrew my husband because of my PhD. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. Watch this. And he is the savior of the body. Your husband is the savior of your house. Because when, they, when, it, when there's an invasion in the house, he's the one that has to go out there and potentially die defending his house. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, as the 12 tribes is subject unto Christ, read. So let the wives, let the what? Let the wives, let the wives, come on, be to their own husbands uh -huh. in everything. You see that right there? Let the wives be to their, be submissive or subject to their own husbands in everything. Meaning everything. Let's get some examples. First Peter 3 and 6. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 6. Read. Even as Sarah mm -hmm. obeyed Abraham. Even as our foremother Sarah, the wife of our forefather Abraham. She did what now? Or even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. She did what? Obeyed Abraham. She obeyed Abraham. Go ahead. Calling him Lord. No, calling him by his first name. Calling him Lord. You're calling him nigger. Calling him Lord. Men are trash. Calling him Lord. Men are dogs. Calling him Lord. We hate men. Calling him Lord. You see that? She called her husband my Lord. That's some heavy, that's a proper example for these modern women who are preaching like robots right now. Sisters, listen, put the PhD under the bed, put the Bible up and highlight it. Hmm? How about that? Read again. Calling him what? Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Yes, of course, you must call your husband my Lord. Let me say it again. Read it again so we get it. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 6. Because I know here, right now, the feminist now, a feminist is ripping the Bible apart right now. Read. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. She did what? Obeyed Abraham. She submitted herself to Abraham in everything. Go ahead. Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Because right now I know there's a feminist online saying, me, I'll be submissive to the right man. Hold on a second. Wait, wait. So that means 100% of the time, what are you then? Hmm? What are you? You say you'll be submissive to the right man. But are you the right woman? Hmm? When you say you, are, you will be submissive to the right man, because that's the argument they use. They say, me, I'll be submissive to the right man. So ho hold on, sister. So do you have the right man right now? No, I don't. That's why I don't submit myself to him. That's what they say. Hold then, Sarah 26, 23. I'm going to show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull down, pull down that imagination in the spirit of Christ. Sarah 26, 23. The reason why right now you are not submissive to the man that you are with right now is because of this. I agree you are saying I'll only be submissive to the right man. So you're not submissive to the man that you have right now because he's not the right man. Okay? Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman. Read. Is given as a portion to a wicked man. Because sister, you are a wicked woman. Sister, I'm going to tell you right now, according to the Bible, you are a wicked woman. That's why you don't know anything about submission because the man you are with, you don't submit yourself to him because you say he's not the right man. But you're not the right woman either. You evil as hell also. you just like him. You understand? A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man because you are a wicked woman. Read. But a godly woman. But a godly woman. Read. Is given to him that feareth the Lord. That's why you don't have a godly man. Because you're not a godly woman. You're not a godly woman. That's why the Lord will not give you a godly man. That's what we're reading in the Bible. You understand? They are good men. They are, the only thing is that they are married to good women. That's it. That's it. 
Now, go back. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 6. Ray. Even as Sarah uh -huh. obeyed Abraham. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, come on. Calling him Lord. Calling him what? Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Read. Whose daughters he are. Whose daughters you are. Read on. As long as he do well. As long as you do well. And are not afraid with any amazement. You are not going to be confused when your role is given unto you. You must fulfill it. That's it. You understand? Now give me Judith 12 verse 14. I'm going to rush a little bit. Because I still need to go to get to the rest of the letters in the name bold. Because I'm going to show you how bold these women, they are bold, man. So that's why I'm still here. I'm still on this wise. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm still, I'm going to touch on these things. I want to aggravate that feminist. I want to aggravate these modern women to repent. This is for their benefit, by the way. We're not doing this because we hate them. No, we love you, sister. That's why we're teaching you this. Read them. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Watch this. Then said Judith unto him. The, then said Judith, our foremother, unto him. Read. Who am I now? Uh, that I should gain say my Lord. That I should be at variance or at odds with my husband, my Lord. Read. Surely. Surely. Whatsoever pleaseth him. Whatso what? Whatsoever pleaseth him. You see, it says, if there be kindness in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men. Mm, that's some beautiful stuff, man. That's some beautiful stuff. Listen. Keep reading. Surely, whatsoever pleaseth him. Whatsoever pleaseth him in the Lord. I will do speedily. I will what? I will do speedily. No, I will drag my feet. I will do speedily. He says, I'm going to do it speedily. Go ahead. And it shall be my joy. It shall be my what? It shall be my joy. Read. Unto the day of my death. That's a beautiful step. This is a black woman saying this. So you modern women, listen. These women, these women that we're reading about here, these are your foremothers. They have more than what you have right now. Listen, even the manner in which they spoke. The level of dignity that they had. You understand? You have a PhD, but you're shameless. You have a PhD, but you have no self-respect. You have a PhD, but you're changing men right in front of your daughter. Right in front of your son. Sister, listen. You need to follow after the footsteps of your foremothers that came before you. We're reading about them right now. It shall be the joy unto the day of my death. Why? They were beautiful. They were feminine. They were submissive. They were cooperative. Do you understand? Now, go back to Sarah 22 verse 4 now. Remember, I have not forgotten about James the fourth chapter. Don't get it twisted. I know some of you forgot. I haven't. Read that for me. Sarah 22 verse 4. I'm going to show you some. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 4. Ray. A wise daughter uh -huh. shall bring an inheritance to her husband. We went over this. A wise daughter will bring an inheritance to her husband. We went over all these precepts to show you what that means. Go ahead. But she that liveth dishonestly. But a modern woman, that's the one that liveth dishonestly. Because modern women are liars. Modern women, brothers, they are liars. Modern women cannot be satisfied because they don't know what they want. With all the degrees they've got, they don't know what they want. That's why they are liars. They are dishonest. That's what the Bible is saying. Read. But she that liveth dishonestly uh -huh. is a father's heaviness. Because she's not going to bring an inheritance to her husband. She's a father's heaviness. Or what, 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 did I, what, what did I go wrong with you, my daughter? What the hell happened? Because she, now she's a tomboy. Hmm? She don't know what she is. You understand? What, what, I want you to... Pay a close attention to the next verse. Read on. Verse 5. Uh -huh. She that is bold. But she that is what? She that is bold. But she that is the opposite of verse 4. Dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Stop right there. But the one that, but the one that is bold, she dishonoreth both her father and her husband. So when, if she dishonoreth her husband, when it says she's bold, she means she's bold towards the scriptures. She's bold against the scriptures. You teach her that said the Lord, she says to hell with that. 
to hell with the Bible, to hell with you. That's what she says. She's bold towards the order that God has given unto her. That's why when it, that's what it says when it said, she that is bold dishonored both her, her father and her husband. She bold towards the scriptures. She cannot take correction. She's a narcissist. She cannot, she, she cannot be told that she's doing wrong. She cannot be told that she's not fit to be a wife. She's bold towards the scriptures and towards her father and her husband. So if she's bold towards her, the scriptures and towards the education that her father is teaching her to prepare, to, to prepare her to be a wife, what do you think she's going to be to you? If she was bold towards her father. That's why there's a saying to say, listen, don't marry a woman who does not have both her parents. Because she doesn't know how to deal with a man. How is she going to talk to you? How is she going to deal with you? She don't know how men speak. So she don't know how to speak to men. So now she gets married, she don't know how to, to speak to her husband. When her husband corrects about something, she's going to be in her feelings. And guess what? She's going to divorce that man. Because she never, she never learned how men speak. Because her father was not around. So she's got baby, she's got daily issues. So now when you speak with her, when you speak, when you talk to her, we in, in a firm voice, you raise your voice, she's going to say you're abusing me. Because she's never, she don't know how to talk to a man. She don't know how to deal with a man. She don't know how to conduct herself around a man. That's why a lot of the modern women, by the way, modern women, they end up alone or they become lesbians. Modern women end up alone or become lesbians. You know why? Because they've got baby, they've got daily issues. These daily issues are making them to be independent. Because they now want to fulfill the role of a man. Not only that, even in relationships, they want to pay, play the role of a man. That's why, they, that's why they become bulldozers and bulldogs in marriages, in their relationships, or they become lesbians. One of the two. Modern women, that's their fate if they don't repent. But repentance is open unto you, modern women. Now, watch this. Read that verse again, verse 5. Deborah of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. You see that? She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Go ahead. But they both. But they both, her father and her husband, will do what? Shall despise her. They're going to hate her. That's why today modern women, modern women, they are not liked. You know why? Because they are not wife material. Meaning what? They're going against the order that the Lord has set up. Modern women are not successful. Modern women are losers. Let me say that again. More, I know right now they hate my guts. Modern women are losers. They are losers. Because they cannot keep a man. They don't know what men want. They cannot meet the standards of what men want. Because modern women have been taught to be what? To be, to be irresponsible, to be disrespectful, to be loud, you understand? To be offensive. They can't keep a man. Modern women, they are bold, they are offensive, they are loud and disrespectful. That's the acronym. Yes, Let me say it again. Modern women, they are bold, offensive, Loud and disrespectful. That's the, that's the acronym. That's what it means. Bold women. Now you know what it means. Now watch this. Now play the next, the first video. Let's play that day. What's the first video? I wrote them down here. Hold on. I'm going to tell you the first video that I want you to play now. The first video. Um... Choose wife, choose, choose your wife wisely. You see, Mdala sent me this video. I thought, you know what? I want to play this. I'm going to show you how bold modern women are. Watch the video. You understand? Do they see? Come on, come on, brothers. 
I want these modern I want these brothers to see the spirit of modern women. It's a TikTok video. I think it was taken on TikTok from TikTok, something like that. Okay, play that video. I want you to read that verse again. Is that 22, verse 5? Devil of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 5. Watch this. She that is bold. She that is bold. You're going to see bold women this day. How bold women are. How bold modern women are. Because bold women are modern women. She that is what? She that is bold. She that is bold. Dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Read. But they both shall despise her. And, but they both will hate her guts. Okay, play the video. Do you have sound? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, uh, the people online are going to hear the sound. Good. Play it. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 It's like she's she's like it's like she's Leonidas on Sparta on 300. Did you see what she did? The first video. This is Sparta. You see how she kicked the brother? Look at how she kicked the brother. Look at the next one. Who's be sleeping the, 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 the husband on in the restaurant? Do you see that? There's another one who choked slam my brother. You see that? Yes, who choked him? Who, who brought him by the neck on the ground? You see that? Look at the next one. Bruce Lee. Did you see Bruce Lee? Yes, Play that video again. I want you brothers to see these modern women. This is how bold they are. Play the video again. I want the people to see it. Sparta. The first one, the first part, she's in 300. The rise of the black woman. Not the rise of an empire. No, 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 no. The rise of the black woman. <laughs> this is, the first one is 300. The rise of the black woman. Did you see the last one? That's some evil stuff, man. You see the brothers? That's what we, that, these are modern, that's the mindset of modern women. Now, let's play the next video. Karen fights the black man. There's a Iromite woman who's fighting with the black man on the bus. I want you to play the video. It's in England, I think. London. Right there, the white woman. 
Because Becky, the black, the white woman, she's the one that recruited the black woman to become to be part of the feminist movement. Do you see what happens? Yes, sir. What the hell is she doing? What does she think gonna happen? She in her mind, because remember, it says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Because they think now they can want, they can, they, are, they can beat the black man. She thinks she's more powerful than the black man. You can't make this up. Is that it on that? You see that? This is crazy, man. You see what she's doing? I mean, she felt, and look at how big she is. Yes. That's crazy, man. This is crazy. Now, play the next video now. The next video is, is the one that I was mentioning it earlier on. You brothers thought I was, I was, I was crazy. Sex on, sex on periods. You can't make this up. I'm going to show you how bold and disgusting and filthy many of these modern women are. Their mindset, by the way, I'm talking about their mindset. Their mind is defiled. Okay, read them. Play it. Period. Sex. That's not something you have with any random person. If you find a and you on your period, y'all gotta be like really Insane. already, mm -hmm. yeah, really close. I heard if you have sex with a girl on her period, you can fall in love with the blood transfer. Is that true? Definitely. I've heard that. Like period. Times will make a so man be more so mm. obviously yeah we fall in love now you gotta be in love with a bitch so yeah. her while she's bleeding that's nasty a bloody bed is not a good bed <laughs> one time i was in my period like came on while i was what Ooh. so that's different, yeah, that's different. That's it's a like bloody he surprise. knocked my period on yeah well, that's I, a bloody I, surprise i think, I think I think it's very disrespectful to lay in someone's bed and not tell them that you have their period. No, about he that, should though. kick you the f out. That's tell the truth. Did you keep going? He should kick you the f out. Kick me out. Now, if you lay in someone's bed and you do not tell them, that is disrespectful. But yes, he wanted to get his nut. It is very disrespectful to lay in a man's bed and you know you have your period and don't tell him that. It's not an African thing. Because, because you're, you're bleeding. You're bleeding. That is your it's time. To, thing. That is your time to cleanse. That's, mm -hmm. that's the time that your body is cleansing. So I can't even lay in his bed. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend is a freak. Now I want you to listen to what this black woman gonna say regarding having sex with a woman on her on her menstrual, and is they says you bond even better. That's some evil stuff. But that's the mindset of the modern woman. Now rewind it, replay it. Listen to what she says. Periods. That's not something you have with any random person. If you f go back, go and you back, on go your back. period, y'all gotta be like really already mm -hmm. yeah. really close. I heard if you have sex with a girl on her period, you can fall in love with the blood transfer. Period. That's not something you have with any random Stop. person. If you he said that's not something you have with any random person. That means she does it with her boyfriend. She does it. He says sex on your periods. It's not something that you do with any random person. I mean, how can she say that? And there's nothing, there's no red flag that is actually raising him up in her head. I mean, that's the filthiness of the modern women today. You cannot make this up. Play it again from the beginning. That's just nasty. Period. Periods. That's not something you have with any random person. If you f and you on your period, y'all gotta be like really already, mm -hmm. yeah. really close. I heard you, you have so the girl on her period. That's all I want. Is that having pe having sex on your periods? You have to be really close with that person. You understand? Because it 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 says it form it 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 forms a stronger bond when you have sex with a man on your period. This is just some demonic stuff. Now, give me Leviticus chapter 15. Damn it. Leviticus 15 verse 19. I'm showing you the boldness of modern women. That's how bold they are. Now read that. Leviticus 15 verse 19. Come on. 
the book of Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 19. Watch this. If a woman have an issue, uh -huh. and an issue in a flesh be blood, and an issue in a flesh be blood, that's her menstrual, right? She shall be put apart seven days. No, she shall have sex because it, it forms a stronger bond. She shall be put apart. No, she must day. have sex with her husband because it forms a stronger bond when she has sex with her husband on her menstrual. Read. She shall be put apart seven days. She must be put apart seven days. Go ahead. And whosoever touches her, whosoever touches her sexually, read, shall be unclean until the evening. Shall be unclean until the evening. Go ahead. And everything that she lies upon in a separation shall be unclean. Read. Everything also that she sits upon shall be unclean. Watch this. Come on. And whosoever touches a bed mm -hmm. shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Listen, these modern women, men, these are the women with the PhDs, ne? These are the women that are edu educated. That's them, ne? These are women that are educated. They say, no, it's good to have sex with your husband on your periods because it forms a stronger bond. You cannot make this shit. Mm, you cannot make this up. Read. And whosoever touches anything that she set upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Jump down to verse 24. Watch this. Verse 24. Read. If any man lie with her at all. If any man lie with her at all, whether you perform oral sex, whether you do hen whatever, whether you do whatever it is that you do, any sexual activity you must there must not be any sexual activity whatsoever when the woman is on her periods. Read. And her flowers be upon him. And her and her menstrual the menstruation be upon this man. He shall be unclean seven days. He shall be unclean seven days. Read. And all the bed where all he lieth shall be unclean. So for seven days this man must be unclean. So, because for those seven days, listen, that your vagina must take a break. That's why the Mosa is doing that also. That it must take, for seven days, it must take a break. Sister said, no, 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 no. It's better on the menstrual because why? We don't have to use lube. The hell is this? Listen, listen. Brothers, you saw it for yourself, right? Yes, sir. That's the modern woman. That's how bold they are. That bold. You understand? They are that bold. That's the, these are modern women. These are not traditional women. These are modern women. Because traditional women will, will have learned from their mothers that, listen, part of you loving your husband is don't have sex with your husband on, him, on your menstrual. That's what it means to love their husbands. That's part of it. Don't have sex with your husband after you give birth. Wait for 40 days if it's a boy. Wait for 80 days if it's a girl. That's part of you loving your husband. But that's the modern woman, brothers. Read again. Verse 24. The book of Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 24. Go ahead. And if any man lie with her at all, mm. and her flowers be upon him, Read. he shall be unclean seven days. He shall be unclean seven days. Read. And all the bed where only life shall be a king. You see that thing? Jump now. Give me Leviticus 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Read verse 18. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 18. Watch this. And if a man shall lie with a woman having a sickness. The sickness here is her issue. Her menstruals. You have sex with a woman on her menstruals. Read. And shall uncover her nakedness. You have sex with her. Read. He has discovered a fountain. You see that? You did. He says what? He has discovered a fountain. And she, no, no, he says what? He, he has, has discovered her fountain. Her fountain is talking about what? Her menstrual. Read. And she has uncovered the fountain of her blood. She, and she uncovers the fountain of her blood. Meaning what? Both of these two, both of them, both the man and the woman, guess what? They are both aware of what they are doing. Here, what we're reading in Leviticus 20 verse 18. Because remember what, remember what the sister said. The sister said, both you have to be really, really close with this person. You cannot just have sex with a, a man 
on your menstrual with anybody. You have to be really close. That means it's consensual. They both agree, Dory. We are going to have sex while you are on your periods. Read that verse again, verse 18. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 18. Read. Right. And if a man shall lie with a woman having a sickness mm. and shall uncover a nakedness. Remember, this man is uncovering the nakedness of this woman. Right? She's loosening her girdle. Go ahead. He have discovered a fountain. And he discovers that she's on her period. Read. She have uncovered the fountain of her blood. And she uncovers the fountain of her blood. She opened the knees. Read. And both of them shall be cut off from among their people. That was the, the punishment was death. Yeah. The punishment was death. For both of you agreeing to have sex and you know that the woman is on her menstrual, you agreeing to do it. it the, the punishment was death. That was the punishment. Their blood will be upon them. There was no animal that was going to be used for this to take place. But on this day, they can repent. They can repent. And they must repent because this is evil as hell. Now give me the next video. Adoption boldness. Adoption boldness. That's the one I want. It's on World Star Hip Hop, I think. Now you're going to give me Sarak 23. Sarak 23 and verse 22. Read that for me. Sarak 23 verse 22. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23, verse 22. Read. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband. With the wife that leaveth her husband, go ahead, which is 80% of them today in these last days. Read. And bringeth in an heir by another. Become a baby mama. Read. For first, she hath disobeyed the law of the Mosai. Adultery. Read. And secondly, she hath trespassed. Trespassed against her own husband. She committed adultery against her husband. Read. And thirdly, she has played the whore in adultery. She had played the whore in adultery. Meaning what? She's for the streets. Read. And brought children by another man. Now this woman, she went outside her marriage. She had sex and she conceived. She had children outside of her, outside of her husband. But now watch this. Now she's with the man. These children are not his, right? Now play the next video. Yes, sir. Watch this. Play it. I want you to look at how bold these modern women are. Watch this. Play it. She was angry hey, because I refused to adopt her kids. Be safe. Oh, this is because I won't do some type of adoption. I see you keep praising all these men that do adoption. I'm not doing adoption so you can take all my money. I'm not doing that. No, they ain't. He don't do shit. No, he don't do nothing. And that's why you mad. That's why you mad. No, he don't do nothing. That's why you mad. That man married somebody else. That's why you so busted and disgusted right now. Yeah. Trying to look like her. Yeah. Don't your stomach her size for some reason? I don't know why. I don't know why. She's fat. I don't know why. How you know? You watch all her stuff? You watching all her stuff? That none of that is not. That, that's just making you look crazy. Let's go. Let's keep it coming. Yeah. I'll let that stuff sit there and go buy me all new shit. Yeah. I'll let that stuff sit there, and if it get burnt up, then that's oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars you gonna have to pay. Oh yes. Believe that. Keep them coming. Let's go. Stack it out here. Because I'm going to get it all. Oh, yeah. I'm getting that. I'm getting that. This woman is kicking this man out of the house because he does not want to adopt her kids, which are not his. So she's throwing him out the house. Guess what? She, he, and the mistake he made is that he's living at the woman's house. Now she got mad. Now she's kicking him out the house because he does not want to adopt her kids. And those children are not his. Now she's kicking, she's kicking him out the house. 
I'm sh this is th these are this is the plight of the modern woman. Is it plain? Yes, sir. Look how she is. You know who she what she trusts upon? She trusts upon her physique. That's why her bums is out. She's got a small waist. Her boobs are out because that's her asset right there. She trusts upon that. Because she doesn't see you when she's being an ostrich. You understand? You see what she's doing? She's kicking the man out the house and throwing his clothes out because he does not want to adopt her snotty nose kids. He don't, she, he don't want to do that. And he does not, he's not supposed to be doing that. The hell is this? But that's what she's doing. She's forcing him to do it. And because he doesn't want, he says, nigga, get the hell out. Get the hell out of my house. And she's throwing his clothes out on the floor. That's crazy. Because these black women, they are crazy. They're crazy. You understand? They are crazy. You see how she's walking? Mincing, walking and mincing as she goes? Give me that in Isaiah 4 verse 4. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. Now Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4. Watch this. We're almost done, we're almost done. The book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. What you just saw, that's the filth of the daughters of Zion, the black women. That's how bold they become now in these last days. The, and these, these are modern women. This is what black men in the world, they have to choose from. This is what they have to pick from. So they don't love black men because they claim to love black men, but this is what they want black men to choose from? From this? No. That's why these sisters must come into this truth and repent. Mm -hmm. Get their minds right. Because this, we will not stand for this. You understand? Read again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. Shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. What you just saw, that is the filth of the daughters of Zion. These are modern women now. Now, there's a video I sent. You understand? Give me Proverbs 7 verse 10. No, no. Give me... Yeah, give me Proverbs 7 verse 10 first. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Okay. There's a video of, of an ostrich. You see how this woman was walking? The way she was acting? Proverbs 7 verse 10. Because as she's walking back and forth to take his clothes out, she's busy shaking her bums. You saw that, then? Yes, sir. To showing you what she don't give a damn about family. The only thing she cares about is social media and what? And how she looks. Now read that Proverbs 7 verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. That's not a Proverbs 31 woman. That's a Proverbs 7 verse 10 woman. Read. And behold, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. They met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. I need you to read a little quicker. They met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. That woman, she's dressed like a hoe. That's a hoe. She's for the streets. That woman that you just saw there. Read. And behold, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She's an evil woman. Read. She is loud. She's what? She is loud. Because these bold women, they are bold. They are offensive, they are loud, and they are disrespectful. That's the modern woman today. Read. She is loud and stubborn. They are loud and they are stubborn. Come on. Her feet abide not in her house. Because she's for the streets. Read. Now she is without. She is without a man and she's outside looking for men to destroy. Go ahead. Now in the streets. Now she's in the streets. Read. She's for the streets. Read. And lying in wait at every corner. Now she's lying in wait at every corner to destroy this man. She says she wants this man to adopt a kid. She doesn't want. Now she's kicking him out the house. Read. And she caught him and kissed him. No, that's it on there. Now watch this. Give me Lamentations 4 verse 3. Did you find that video yes, of the ostrich? Yes, uh -huh. I'm going to show you what the Bible is saying. She's loud. She's stubborn. She dressed like a hoe because she is one. We're going to... Is we're going to keep it a hundred. That's what the Bible commands. Read. 
The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Even the sea monsters throw out the breast. The sea monster, meaning, what is a sea monster? A sea monster is a what? Is a whale. A sea monster is a shark. A sea monster is a crocodile. Read. Give suck to their young ones. They take care of their children. Read. The daughter of my people is become cruel. But the daughter of my people, the black woman, they become cruel. Read. Like the ostrich. Like the what? Like the ostrich. Like the what? Like the ostrich. Read. In the wilderness. So the most High God is comparing the black woman to an ostrich. Now, play the video. The ostrich walk. Ne? That's the one. I want you to see how it walks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With a big bum up like this. Watch it. Play the video. Right there is the ostrich walk, walking and mincing as they go. Give me Isaiah 316 now. Like an ostrich. You see that? Big booty. You understand? No hair. Big booty and no hair. Yep, yep. They're like the ostrich. We're reading Bible. This is Bible. The most high knows what he made. Is that it on that? Play it again. You read uh, Isaiah 3.16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 16. Watch this. Moreover, the Lord said, uh -huh. because the daughters of Zion are holy. They are proud. Read. And walk with straight forth neck. They do what? And walk with straight forth neck. Play the ostrich video again. They do what? And walk with straight forth neck. Stop. Play the video. So what is he, what was the ostrich doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like this. That's what they be doing. Mm-hmm. That's what you are seeing right there. Read again, read again. They what? And walk with stretch forth next. Stretch forth next. Like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And want on eyes. Is nyoga nyoga. That's what you are seeing there. And what? And want on eyes. Got the with the umbrellas. Read. Walking. And minting as they go. Play the video again. Doing what? Walking and minting as they go. Walking and minting as they go. Read. And making a tingling with their feet. You see that thing? So that you see their bums be shaking back and forth. That's what they be doing. There's another one that I showed you. They call it the booty walk. Play it. Our because we played the video of an actual ostrich, right? The Lord says, go back to Lamentations 4 verse 3. We're not making nothing up. Before you play the video, find it and then hold it. Read that for me. Lamentations 4 verse 3. I'm going to show you the booty walk. Walking and mincing as they go like an ostrich you just saw. Read that. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 verse 3. Watch this. Come on. Even the sea monsters draw out the breath. Read. They give suck to their, to their young ones. Come on. The daughter of my people is become cruel. Uh -huh. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. Like the what? Like the ostriches in the wilderness. Now let's see where she does the ostrich walk now. Play the video. There it is. That's the ostrich walk. That right there is the ostrich walk. You see it, right? Yes, it's a very short clip. It's a very short clip. Now go back to the actual ostrich and play it. Yes, I'm going to show you the Bible is a true book. Go back to the ostrich video and play the ostrich video again. Is it playing? Yes, play. When it's done, go back to the booty walk. Same thing. 
You understand? You cannot listen. The Bible is a true book. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. That's the modern woman today. That's how bold they are. That's how bold they are. You saw that, right? Yes, sir. All praises to the Most High God. All praises to the Lord. Read that Lamentations 4 verse 3. One more again. I'm almost done. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Even the sea monsters throw out the press. Go ahead. They give suck to their young ones. Read. The daughter of my people has become crude. Uh -huh. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. Give me that in Job 39. Job 39. What is the character? What is the mindset of an ostrich? Let's see what the Bible says about that thing. Job chapter 39. Now, read verse 13. We're going to read down. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 39, verse 18. Read. Gave us, gave us thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks. Gave us thou the goodly wings unto the peacock. You know what peacock meant? You know the peacock, because I remember when I, was, when I grew up in the Bundus, there was a family, they had many peacocks. So you find the peacock, because the peacock, the thing that it loves the most is what? The wings, ne? They'll be spreading their wings to see, so that you can see how beautiful it looks. That's the black woman. Read. Or wings and feathers unto the ostrich. And or wings are or feathers unto the ostrich. Read. Which leave the eggs in the earth. They leave their eggs in the... They forget where they lay their eggs. Meaning they forget their children. Read. And warmeth them in dust. They mo and warm their eggs in dust. Because... I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how this works today. Read that verse again. And leave it there what? Which leave the eggs in the earth. She forgets where her children are. Not only that, she forgets that she's pregnant. She goes to the clubs. She drinks. You understand? She be cross lighting. You understand? Doing uh, one night stands and all that. Forgetting that she's pregnant even. You ever see, you see, because we see black women with beer bottles with big stomachs. They are pregnant. They are coca, we buy coca, Papa Sporto. To some time we'll be talking about this. A woman pregnant with an Amstel, Koshe Bini. We see them in Mzanzi. Read. And forget that. They... No, 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 no. And woman them in what? Which leaves the eggs in the air. She forgets that she's pregnant. She goes to the club with a big stomach out with a beer bottle. Amstel. Read. And warmeth them in dust. How does she warm them in dust? She sleeps with multiple men while she's pregnant. Read. And forget that the food may crush them. That her food may crush her eggs. We know what the food is. Yeah, it's a metaphor. Go ahead. Or that the wild beast may break them. The wild beast goes into what? It goes on to the, the home and the man. Who don't give a damn whether you're pregnant or not. Remember, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Whether you're pregnant, a whoremonger will sleep with you. Read. She is hardened against the young ones. She don't give a damn about her kids. She's hardened against her young ones. Read. As though they were not hers. As though she does not her children. Read. Her labor is in vain without fear. You see, her labor is in vain without fear. When she went into child labor, it was all in vain without fear. She don't take care of them now. She went through those child labor pains to give birth to the kids, but she don't give a damn about them. Read. Because God has deprived, deprived her of wisdom. He's not talking about all women. He's talking about this type of women. The most that God has deprived this type of woman of wisdom. Who are these type of women? Modern women. Read. Neither has he imparted to her understanding. That's why they have no understanding when it comes to her, her role, meaning her role in a marriage and what her job is. She don't know what her job is as a wife. She don't know. You understand? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, watch this. Give me... Go back to James now. Go back to James, the fourth chapter. James, James chapter 4, verse 1. I told you, I have not forgotten, brothers. James chapter 4, verse 1. Now, go back to James 4, verse 1. We're going to go back to Sarah 25. Full circle, where we started. You understand? Read that. 
Chapter of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Where, why does the black woman fight with the black man? Read. Come they in your hands? Uh -huh. Even of your last, that war in your members? Because that's their last. They, to, their last to, is to do the booty walk. Their last is to kick their husbands in the chest. Mm -hmm. Their last is to smack their husbands across the face in a restaurant. Their last is to act like Bruce Lee and kick their husband out. You see how they did? Their last is to force their brother to adopt her no good kids, which her baby daddy is not, doesn't want to be a part of. But she wants another man to adopt her kids, and if he doesn't want, she's kicking, her, she's kicking him out the house. Go ahead. That's the last. Read. Come they not hands. Even of your last that war in your members. You saw the last the, you saw the last that war in the mind of the modern women. Read. Ye last and have not. They last for these things, but they don't get them. Because modern women don't have the things they want, by the way. They don't have the things they need. They have the things they want, but they don't have the things they need. Not only that, they don't know what they want. They don't know what they need. They don't know what they want. Right? Ye kill and desire to have. That's why they hate. That's why now they hate men. Because they desire to have the position of the man. That's the last that war in their members. That's why ye kill. They end up hating men. That's why many of them, they are feminists. You understand? Modern women are feminists. Period. Read. And desire to have. They desire to have the position of the man. They can't get it, so they hate men. Read. And cannot obtain. They cannot obtain the position of that man. Read. Ye fight and war. They fight and war. Remember, fighting can be accidental, but war is premeditated. So they premeditate how they're going to fight with their, how they war with their husbands, how they war the black man. You know how they do it? They go to college. They go to university. That's how they prepare the war they're going to launch against the black man. Because they say, I'm more educated than you, but you can't keep a man. I'm more educated than you, but you're a baby mama. You're not a good mother. You're not a good example to your kids. You hate your son. You teach your daughter to be a whore just like you. You, you see that thing? He says, you what? He fight and war. They fight with the black man. They war with the black man. They premeditate war. By what? By saying, I'm an independent black woman. They, they what? They deprive the black man access to his own kids. That's the war. They use the court against the black man when it comes to a kid. Remember Tolles Mo? Tolles Mo was accused of rape. That's the war they have with the black man. Tolles Mo was accused of rape and all praise to the most side, the Lord delivered him out of that mess. But that woman who accused that brother, she's not in jail. She's roaming the streets. Guess what? She's going to do it again. She's going to do it again to another man, to another black man. And you've got black women. How come black women are not taken to the streets for the evil that she has done? The black women will not do that. How come our sisters don't take to the street for this woman accusing their own brother of rape? And these same women that don't take to the streets, they've got sons, by the way. Mm. These are the same women, by the way. The same man that they say they hate is the same man that they raise up in the house. That's the, I'm showing you the mindset of the modern women. That's how bold they are. That's how bold they've become. What verse you went? Verse 2, sir. Read again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Ye lust and have not. Mm. Ye kill and desire to have. Go ahead. And cannot obtain. Read. Ye fight and war. Yet ye have not, mm. because ye ask not. Because you ask not means you, you, you don't pray for the right things. Because the reason why they want these PhDs, these degrees and all that, is because of what? Keep reading. It's not, because, it's not to help their husbands. It's to belittle their husbands. It's to look down on their husbands. It's to say, I, I, oh, I outgrew my husband. That's what they say. Read. Ye ask mm. and receive not. They receive not. Read. Because he ask amiss. Because they ask amiss. Go ahead. That he may consume it upon your last. That's the reason why they don't get it. 
That's why these modern women with all the degrees they've got, with all the positions they've got, guess what? They are still not happy. Modern women are not happy. Modern women are angry. Modern women are bitter. Modern women, they don't know what they want, nor do they know what they need. That is the plight of modern women. Modern women are self-destructive women. Modern women are not wives. Modern women are for the streets until they repent. Understand that. Understand that thing. Give me that instruction in one verse one. If modern women want husbands, because men want traditional women. Men want traditional women. But today's women, they are modern women, but they want traditional men. So they want to have their cake and eat it too. You are a modern woman, but you want a man to chase after you. No, 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 no. You want a man to court you. Modern, mo modern women want to be courted like traditional women. No. Men will court traditional women. Men, they sleep, they sex modern women, but they don't make them wives. Understand that? Read that. Yeah. Chapter 25, verse 1. No, 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 no. I call something different. Yeah, it's right 21 and 1. Chapter 21, verse 1. Watch this. My son, mm -hmm. as thou sinned. No, no, you know what? Give me Isaiah 32, verse 9. Sisters, this is what you must do now. Isaiah 32 verse 9. This is the message to modern women. Message to modern women. You must extract this for TikTok. Message to modern women. Read that. Isaiah 32 verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9. This is the message to you modern women. This is the message to you by the Most High God. Pay attention. Read it. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Modern women, you are at ease. You're okay with what? You're okay with the black man being at the bottom. You're okay with you looking down on the black man. You're okay with you not standing up for your sons. You're okay with that. You're okay with you turning your daughters into manly women and your sons into what? It must be into effeminate men. You're okay with that. You are at ease with that. Read. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Hear the Lord, the voice of the Lord, you careless daughters. You careless. Why are you careless? Because you turning your daughters into masculine women, into manly women. You turning your sons into effeminate men. Read. Give ear unto my speech. Give ear unto the word of God. Read. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. You see, listen. Many days and years you've been troubled since we've been in captivity. Read. Ye careless women. You careless women. Because you modern women, you are careless women, the Lord says. You are ostriches in your mind. Read. For the vintage shall fail. Because now the vintage is failing, meaning what? The older women cannot even get to you. Because you think you're better than them. Read. The gathering shall not come. The gathering shall not come. Come on. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. He says, tremble, you women that are at ease. You must be scared. You women that are at ease. Read. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Be troubled, you careless women. You modern modern women are careless women. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. Strip you. Make you bad. The Lord says you must have shame. Because right now, modern women are shameless women. You see it on TikTok. You see it on Instagram. You see it on YouTube. You see it on OnlyFans. Read. And get sackcloth upon your loins. Meaning what? You must have shame. Put shame upon you. The Lord is saying. Because today modern women. Sarah 26. We're coming back. Sarah 26. Verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 26 verse 10. Read. If thy daughter be shameless. Because today our daughters. The daughters of Zion. They are shameless today. Read. Keep her in straight. He says, keep her in straight. Meaning what? The straightness is what? The laws of God. Modern women, they need fathers. 
Modern women have daily issues. Modern women, they're turning into lesbians. Modern women are at ease. That's why they take out their frustrations on their sons and their daughters. Read. Lest she abuse herself through overmatch liberty. Because right now they're saying they are independent. That's why they are abusing themselves. Look at Lori Harvey. She's abusing herself with overmatch liberty. And she's got a father, Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey is okay with her daughter saying, with her daughter being what? Being paraded all over the internet. Sleeping with a, 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 a son and a father at the same time. Because she slept with PDD. She slept with PDD's son. So as a father, you cannot be okay with that. You understand? I'm on Team Lori. After all this, this is crazy. And now she's on the cover of one of the magazines in South Africa. She says, a, a woman who men cannot get enough of. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it at Woolworths. She's on the cover of one of the magazines. You brothers must look that up. They, they power on the cover of the magazine. She's got a, there's a picture of her. It says, the caption says, a woman man cannot seem to get enough of. You cannot make this up. Right is left, up is down, good is evil. That's the mindset of the modern women, and that's the mindset of these simps that support them. Read on. Is what, lest she what? Lest she abuse herself with overmatch liberty. Through overmatch liberty. Because she does not have a hedge over her. That's why she's spoiled. Men are spoiling her. Read verse 12. Verse 12. Read. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. He says, this woman, a shameless woman, will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. This is a metaphor. The mouth goes into what? Goes into her knees. She'll open her knees as a man that is thirsty. Read. When he has found a fountain. She is going to be like a man that has found a fountain who's been walking for miles. Read. And drink of every water near her. She will drink of every water near her. She'll sleep with every, anything that moves. That's why men cannot seem to get enough of it. Read. By every hedge. By every hedge. A hedge is a rod. By every rod, she'll what? Will she sit down? Will she sit down? Come on. And open her quiver. And open her vagina. Against every air. Against every penis. That's what we're reading in. That's what we read. That's the mindset of modern women. They say they are independent. They say they are feminists. But this is what their mindset is. This is what they do with their bodies that don't belong to them. Go back to Isaiah 32. Read verse, verse 11 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 11. Read. Trample ye women that are at ease. It says, tremble ye women that are at ease. Go ahead. Be troubled. Be troubled. Because modern women, they are not troubled. Modern women are at ease. Read. Be troubled. Ye careless ones. Be troubled, you careless women. Because men and women are careless women. Read. Strip you and make you bear. Meaning strip you, make you bear, meaning what? Have some shame. Read. And get sackcloth upon your loin. Watch this. Give me that in uh, give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 3. It says strip you, make you bear. Because when you are bare, you're supposed to, but that's a shame. For you to be walking around parading your behind all over YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Saying, no, my body, my choice. I saw what is this other woman came on? Mbalenge. That's her name. She was post. There's a picture that she posted. She was wearing a swimsuit or something. Saying, my body, I choose to do whatever I want to do with my body. My body is my body. You can't tell me nothing. My body is my power. That's what she said. Okay. Read that. Revelation chapter 3. I think it's verse 18. No, verse 18 or verse 15. Let me see, let me see. Mm, yes. Verse 18. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 18. Watch what Christ says here. Come on. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Here's the gold that was tried in the fire. Come on. That thou mayest be rich. Read. And white raiment. Uh-huh. That thou mayest be clothed. Why, that thou mayest be what? That thou mayest be clothed. That you may cover up. Read. And that the shame of thy nakedness. And that they what? And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. You see that? That the shame of your nakedness does not appear. That's why the Lord says, Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. That the shame of your nakedness does not appear. Go back. The 
chapter Read of them. Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 11. Read. Trample, ye women that are at ease. Go ahead. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Come on. Strip you, make you beg, uh -huh. and get sackcloth upon your loins. Because when you when we put sackcloth, sackcloth is bare lap. When we fasting, when we have to what? We have to afflict our souls, acknowledge our offenses, and repent. That's what the Lord is commanding modern women that are at ease. If they want to stop being at ease, give me that in Psalms 94 verse 16. This is the solution for modern women. Watch this. Psalms 94 verse 16. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 94 verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? You see what the Lord says? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Because what did the Lord command the modern woman? Go back to Isaiah 32 verse 9. Watch what he says. The book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9. Watch this. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Stop right there. You hear what the Lord is commanding them? Rise up, you women that are at ease. Go ahead. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. What must they do? Go back to Psalms 94 verse 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Watch this. Who will rise up for me? You see that? Who will rise up for me? That's what it says. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Now he's saying, who will rise up for me? Go ahead. Against the evil doers. Against modern women. Which one of you women are going to rise up against modern women? The only women that can rise up against modern women is traditional women. And traditional women will only rise up if they are married to who? They are married to Israelite men. The, the traditional women are not going to do that without getting permission from their what? From their husbands. Because the traditional women must set the example for modern women. That's the job of the more traditional Traditional women set examples for modern women because modern women are like children. They are at ease. Modern women, they are careless, the Lord says. Read. Or oh, who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You see that the workers of iniquity today, in this context, we talk about modern women. They are the workers of iniquity because they are setting a poor example to the young girls. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. So the Lord is showing what modern women must do. They must rise up for the Lord against the evildoers. What are those evildoers? Modern women. And which women are going to do that? Traditional women are going to do that. Judith 8.24. Traditional women, they're going to set the example for modern women. Because modern women, they, they, the modern women, they're falling a hundred years behind traditional women. Modern women have fallen a hundred years behind traditional women. Read that. The book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. Go ahead. Now, therefore, O oh brethren, mm -hmm. let us show an example to our brethren. Be you see that? So, but now, we, we the prophets, we're going to teach these black women how to be in complete order. How to submit. And they're going to see sisters in this truth submitting to us, the men in this truth. And they're going to see, oh, that's how it's done. We see how the sisters reverence the leadership. We see how the sisters reverence the men in the congregation. Guess what? This is the example the sisters are setting for us to follow. Read. Because their hearts depend upon us. Modern women, their minds depend on traditional women. Because traditional women are married. Read. And the sanctuary and the house. And the what? And the house. Because modern women don't know how to run the house. Modern women don't know how to run the house. They don't know how to cook. They only know how to make it clap. Read. And even though they, they do know how to make it clap, but they'll give you a disease. Go ahead. And the altar rest upon us. You see that thing? The things that pertain to the temple rest upon us, the men. To teach the women how to behave, the women teach the children how to act. It's that simple. Because the men, we want to teach these women they are to fall in their place. Sister, know your place according to how God has ordained you. We are in our we are in our roles. We're doing what the Lord says we must. The black women must follow. You understand?
Because we the leaders of the nation. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. One more again. Modern women must humble down to what this Bible is about. What this Bible says. And they must humble down to what this scripture is saying. Read it. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the what? And, and the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the what? And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. That's what modern women need to understand. The head of the woman is the man. Now read verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. For the man is not of the woman. We are not created for the woman. Read. But the woman of the man. But the woman was created on this earth. Her sole purpose upon this earth was for a man. Not to be independent. Not to be a lesbian. Not to be gender fluid. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman. The man was not created for the woman because Adam lived many years upon this earth without the woman. Read. But the woman for the man. But the woman was created here on the earth for the man. Understand that. That's what modern women need to understand. If they cannot understand that, they will not inherit the kingdom of God on earth. They will not do it. So they must repent. Understand that thing. I'm going to end the class right there, brothers and sisters online. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord. No, 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 no. Before we get, go back to Zach 25 and 1. This will be my outro. Zach 25 and 1. This is how we're going to restore the honor back in the nation of Israel through marriage. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Watch this. In three things I was beautified mm. and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Both before God and man. Read. The unity of brethren. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. Watch this. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. Man and wife that two shall be one flesh. Same mind, same spirit, same judgment. Because each of them, they both have submitted themselves to the role that God has given them. That's why they are on the same mind. That's how we build the nation of Israel back up. There is no any other way outside of this. The most that God has given as a formula on how to restore honor back to the 12 tribes of Israel through marriage because that's how we started. You understand? In the beginning, that's how it's going to end in the, in the end. With marriage. It started with marriage. It's going to end with marriage. Understand that. Oh, praise to the most high. Let's, let's break bread, brothers and sisters. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had sat saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord and with it, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh and with it, Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand. <clears throat> oh, praise to the Most High. Oh, praise his brothers and sisters. Oh, praise okay. Sir, sir. Oh, praise to the Lord. That's the end of the class this day. Hope you are edified this day. Oh, praise to the Most High.